ahead and do a quick recap the last time, um, and we'll uh, we'll pick up from where we left off. Um, so uh, this particular gang of adventurers um, was uh, recently broken out of prison in the Noble Hand Temple in the capital city of Sural. Um, and as you were um, investigating, kind of finding areas of ways to get out of this prison cell, um, you uh, came across a secret passageway that led deeper into the underground chambers of the Noble Hand Temple. Uh, and uh, which was very strange. Uh, the tunnels here seemed new and weren't um, things that two very tenured members of the Noble Hand group uh, and clergy didn't recognize. Uh, so it's very odd. Uh, and as you progress downward, uh, you did notice there was a whole complex down here. Uh, it seemed as if it was recently created. Uh, according to Thad, our neighborhood friendly dwarf, uh, you could tell that it was built maybe within the last 10 to 15 years, which is strange. He wasn't aware of anything like that happening at the temple he's uh, frequented for such a long time. As you explored more, you started to see that there are actually people down here. Uh, guards and cultists, people in garb that didn't match those up above. Uh, after some interesting combat scenarios, uh, one being a very gruesome trap of a uh, giant blade that shot down a hallway and nearly killed a couple of you guys, uh, you, uh, you uh, discovered that this uh, secret underground base belong to a cult known as the Zatzer. Uh, continued to press on with through this place and discovered that Supreme Watcher Tina, the Supreme Watcher of the Noble Hand Temple, uh, was actually a high ranking official within this cult. And uh, dialoguing with him, uh, as you kind of confronted him, you discovered uh, that the Zatzerai essentially are a atheistics in a way. It's not that they don't believe in the gods, they just don't believe they have as much of a hand in the world um, as it's made to seem. And um, you kind of discovered that their belief is essentially the, the floating islands were raised by man and not by the gods, and essentially man saved themselves. Uh, the uh, kind of confrontation continued as you uh, press what you needed. And what was interesting about all of this, you seem to have stumbled upon a secret meeting uh, between uh, between them. Uh, I think I think that echo is either Clayton or uh, Jesse, based on the green lights I see. You let me know. Should we all just try muting? I'm staying muted. Should we all just mute when? Yeah. See talking? if it goes away. If it doesn't, it's got to be the mic I had set up. I can switch it if so. Nate, can I just say nice use of the word clandestine? I'm holding on to that the whole time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, you seem to have interrupted a meeting between Supreme Watcher Tion uh, and this woman who, as soon as you recognized that you um, recognized that you had interrupted them, this woman very gruesomely transformed into this quite... Uh, gross figure. Um, let me switch that. Um, and in doing so, it, uh, it transformed into this really gross creature that seemed to be amphibious. And she dove into a canal system that had been built into this complex and kind of skewed it off, uh, which allowed you to confront and dialogue more with Supreme Watcher Tion, uh, which immediately turned into a brawl between yourselves, him, and a hidden stone guardian that kind of came from the wall <laughs> and uh, you um, had quite a struggle kind of fighting this creature at first uh, because it uh, one was resistant to almost all of your attacks unless they were magical uh, and anytime you tried to attack the supreme watcher it protected him and you weren't able to get through until that had a really clever idea to just light a giant sphere of fire right in the center of all of them uh, which kind of pushed them apart for a little bit as supreme watcher tried to avoid it uh, and um, in his haste to try to escape, um, he couldn't escape the flames and died sadly. A charred, ruined corpse on the floor. Uh, but the best part of all of that uh, is that um, Jesse, uh, sorry, uh, Thad's character was able to uh, collect a really awesome weapon that is seen as the symbol of the Noble Hand called Helm's Retribution uh, that he's now carrying with him and is likely. 
likely to do some more damage. Uh, as you were investigating Supreme Watcher's uh, kind of corpse and seeing what else he had on him, you found a um, interesting symbol of the Urzatsurai that you haven't hadn't seen on any of the other cultists. Um, as you were kind of expecting it, seeing that it was kind of different, had these protrusions on it, um, that felt a strange feeling as if something was touching him behind it. When he slipped around to try to grab it, he grabbed this invisible mass that suddenly turned into this young, dark-skinned woman. Uh, and in her uh, attempts to persuade you that she wasn't trying to do anything wrong, uh, you obviously had her cornered, and she did share that she was actually Benton Sin, the daughter of the lost, possibly murdered Watcher Sin, uh, who was down here investigating what happened to her lost father. Quickly, you formed a truth, uh, truce. You found some trust in each other. Uh, and she shared that she does think there's a treasure vault down here that she was kind of trying to figure out how to open. Um, that looks like that was the location where they put some of their stuff. So we were able to find that vault, open it up with the key that you found from Watcher Sin, which was seen to uh, And uh, we're able to recover not only your goods that were stolen from you while you were imprisoned, uh, but also uh, some other cool magic items that I think you guys have all dispersed. And that's where we left the last adventure. Uh, so it is uh, uh, kind of where we'll start off. Um, you are in, let me kind of put that figure on the screen so you all can see it. Um, you're in this kind of lower corner of the, uh, of the space, uh, kind of down here in this area. Still a few other places to go for. I think that's um sounds like it's everything that you need. Uh, I did I did see I think some other places uh, that uh, you could explore in this area. Well, before we proceed, uh, I'm hurting pretty bad, so I was hoping to make use of the uh, necklace, so whatever charm that was that could turn my ale into a potion of health. Yes, who, who's in possession of the necklace? I think we had uh, yet to assign out the necklace, Triton, uh, yeah. and one other item. So, I will, I'll I'm... pick up that necklace. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you, definitely. The uh, amulet of the drunkard. Yes. Oh, that's right. The amulet of the drunkard. Um, if you wanted to, you probably could take a short rest here in this location, roll some hit dice to try to get some of your health points back as well. I would be into that. Yeah, I definitely need to do some sort of short rest. I'm down more than half. I'm point. almost out of spell slots as well. I'm down somewhat. Yeah, can we do a rest all around? Yeah, feel free. Uh, roll a take a short rest if everyone wants to hit that on their character sheets, uh, and then roll the appropriate hit die of what you'd like to spend. Let me know if you have questions on that mechanic again. Um. Short rest taking. Yeah, and in that space where you see, like, it says, like, a hit die and it has, like, three checkboxes. Um, yeah. You can oh, roll sure. uh, the appropriate number of those dice, um, however many checkboxes you use, and then add that back to your health. Cool. Gotcha. Oh, that was a terrible one. <laughs> um... And then uh, let me know if that mic is still crackling enough when you just switch that off. No, it sounds good now. How come my hit points aren't uh, completed by doing that? How do you mean? Uh, are I'm still down. Did somewhat. you refresh? Yeah. Oh, did you? Um, so after you, so you roll, and then you actually have to add it in manually. Did you do that? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so after you roll, then you, you figure out what your roll was, and then you add it back. So, like, for you as an example, if you take a short rest, your hit die are 1d8 plus 1. So you can roll it four times per your short rest. Um, so technically you could do 4d8 um, each, so plus 4 if you did 4, each time you add 1. 
Um, if you only want to roll one, you're not down that much, so you might not want two more more than one or two, but it's up to you. And uh, while we're all rolling as well, I would elect that with the gear that we did not assign yet, uh, I can take the amulet of the drunkard as fitting. <laughs> I think uh, our rogue should take the boots of elvenkind, which make no sound, and our good friend Zunis should take the triton as a weapon of his people. I would be honored. Works for me. I would be honored. Um, oh, neither that echo. Oh, neither that echo. That sounds good. Sad. My only thought is is giving the boots of elvenkind kind of redundant to um, Rowena. Or does this actually add to her stealth? Uh, it does. That necessarily... is an excellent point. Yeah. Uh, just a procedural note. It doesn't actually add to her stealth, um, but it would aid her in in being stealthy. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, and let's do that then. That sounds good. Great. And then, uh, fantastic. So. Um, I guess we should talk to, uh, the new Sim and see what is, uh, the next area of exploration. Uh, well, um, I do, I do think there's gotta be some other passageway out of here. I've been invisible most of this time and I don't think anyone's really spotted me and I noticed that... They've been going into uh, a space that I've tried to follow, and by the time I catch up, no one's there. So I'm assuming there's another way in and out of here, um, somewhere in this area. Um, and she she does kind of signal that from where you are, it's probably a little bit north of your location, uh, up a little bit in this space. Say we go check it out. Okay. Um, so you guys kind of walk, uh, you're kind of on your way over there. Um, again, passing by some of the passed out um, guards that Bethany magically put to sleep. Um, and as you kind of walk in, you see this last area of this, this space that you haven't really investigated. Uh, and it appears to be a, um, it appears to be like a, um, like a storeroom. Um, there's a few things that are in here that kind of stand out. There's there's crates in all locations. There are sacks of food stores, a um, few odds and ends, some tools, that kind of stuff. Um, definitely seems like this area was meant to be some kind of store uh, storehouse uh, for a lot of different items. Um, who walked in first, if I can ask? What's the marching order here? Uh, I'll go in first. Okay. Uh, Ivo, can you I'll go in up? second. Yeah, uh, actually, I'll have you both roll a perception check for me. Ooh. Four. I okay. got 21. Uh, okay. So kind of like shoved into the back corner um, on your screen, it would be the top right. Um, you can see a strange pile of metal. Um, the metal isn't very shiny. It does seem kind of dulled. Um, and a bit beaten, but you do see a big pile of metal over there, kind of stuffed behind the crates. Let's go check out this metal. That uh, sounds like a solid plan. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you, um, are any of you guys proficient in Smith's tools? It would be in your um, like lower left corner where it says tools. I am not. Nope, just playing cards and vehicles. Carpenters and vehicles. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I would like whoever's looking at this first to roll a um, investigation check for me. Ooh. Um, I would say, Rowena, you're a little more perceptive than I am at this moment. I'm not feeling it so much, so maybe you should do that. <laughs> okay, I'm perceptive, but I don't know if I'm investigative because I've only rolled an eight. <laughs> So yeah, that was an eight for an investigation. Eight. Um, you can't quite tell 
exactly what this is. But you do notice one of the pieces of metal are a little bit bigger than the others. And it looks to be roughly in the shape of a dog. A dog? Yeah, it almost looks like a dog head, if a little bit crumpled. Oh, is it kind of like the one we, we battled against? It yeah. looks very similar to it, but almost like um, maybe it was like a different model. Um, but it does seem to be the same type of mechanical dog-like creature that was kind of crumpled up and put here. Um, why don't you does it look at all like a threat? Um, roll... I'm going to let you either roll insight or investigation as to how that might go. Um, I'm going to roll... What are I better at? Where's insight? I'm going to do insight because okay. <laughs> that's plus two. Yeah, no. uh, 11. 11. So it doesn't look like it's a threat. Um, you, you actually think it might be fixable. Um, you don't know what the outcome of fixing it would do. You're not really sure what this is, but it does look like if you can put it together right, you might actually be able to fix this thing. Um, oh. Roll an um, Arcana check while you're there. Yeah, Arcana, I don't do it with Arcana boards. <laughs> uh, 14. Oh. Yeah, you're not sure. You assume there might be some spells that can probably do this, but you're not sure what they are. Um, I guess I announced to the group, does anyone, uh, this here looks like, um, one of the dogs that we, we battled against, but slightly, a slightly different version. Does anyone here think that they could, uh, maybe try to put it together or activate it? Um, plus maybe our new companion whose name I do not remember. Bethany. 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 Be Bethany. Uh, are you any good with um, steel work or spells of this nature? Um, well, I'm certainly magical, but I don't know if I know exactly what this is. Um, I guess I can take You've a You've never seen anything it. like this, but... Uh, well, I mean, I saw a few of these similar things that they had um, that were kind of guarding this area, but... Um, this one looks a little bit different, and it definitely looks broken. Yep. I'm, I'm sh I, it sounds like someone just shoved it here as junk, but I don't know. I can take a look at it, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm around. not. I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. I don't know. Maybe Please. if we kept it with us, we could figure it out later. I'm not certain, but um, I think. Um, Dungeon Master, how heavy is this? Obviously, it's metal, but how uh, big? That's a good is question. It? Let me see if I can find out for you. For us to carry it and, and put off doing it right now. Uh, well, for sure, you could carry it in pieces if you put it in your bag of holding. Because um, you've got kind of about... You basically have about 500 pounds worth of things you can just carry in there and it always weigh the same. Right, right, um, right. So you could do that. And it would fit. You could shove it in there and, and recollect it later. Um, so in terms of weight, you're not too concerned. There's not too much in that bag of holding right now. Um, so if you want to just hold it, that's certainly not option. I don't see why not. Just toss yeah. it in that bag. Yeah. Throw is it. there uh, is there anything else in the room that we think might be of interest? Uh, roll a perception check for me. Eight. Eight? Uh, eight. Eight. Yeah, you can't really see anything, um, but Bethany does say um, they're, they're, that while you're here, like, this is the room. I was here, and I've seen people enter, and the same people don't come out, so there must be something here certain and where i'm not sure i was never able to see where they went oh and this okay so do we think you think there might be some sort of trap door or hidden passageway yeah there must be somewhere um i don't know exactly where but my gut tells me there must be all right guys we've been through this before let's uh let's do a better uh, job this time yep it's bad it's not just rats okay <laughs> <laughs> it's not <probably laughs> just rats um if everyone wants to look go ahead and roll and um uh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the choice. Roll a perception check or an investigation check. Whichever you feel like you can do a little better. Ugh. <laughs> I got a, uh, how does a three for a perception, what does that get me? Not a lot. <laughs> you see a room. <laughs> let's, let's build the suspense. I got a seven for perception. 
You see? Okay, well, hide it. I like it. We'll get there. <laughs> I can double that. I've got 14. Okay. I've got the chairs. Okay, so uh, wow. Rowena, in her eagle eyed uh, ness, donning her new boots, uh, feeling a little more comfortable with the space, notices um, that the torch in the top area seems to be just a little bit askew. Um, almost as though it's. It, it could be straight, but it's not. Torch. Look, Something sometimes people put up torches in a hurry. I'm sure it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, this isn't, you know, good old dwarven craftsmanship. Uh, so you do, <laughs> you do go over to the torch, and you notice that it is a little kind of cocked, and just kind of behind where the metal brace is kind of bolted into the wall, there seems to be like a little opening. Um, and as you push it open more, it does turn, and behind it is a kind of deep, wide circle. Like a hole. Check like, out the circle. That goes into the ground? No, it like goes into the wall. Picture it. So oh. you think of the torch on the wall and you kind of like turn it. It almost turns kind of like a little keyhole cover. And there's a like a kind of fist-sized circle. I'd like to investigate this hole in the wall. Yeah, roll an investigation check for me. Ooh! It's my lucky day. 24. Uh, so you can kind of see pretty well into into the back of it. And in all the way at the back of it, especially since you did the same thing with the treasure vault, you can see that there are these protrusions inside that look like they'll accept the same um, uh, the same kind of symbol that you use to open the treasure vault uh, that you got from Watcher Sin. Or from oh. Tion. Well, the Ur Urzatsurai symbol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's get this going. I I've got one of them. I'll put that in. Okay. Uh, so you you are which one are you trying to put in there? Um. The didn't I take the pendant off the guy? You the did. Ur uh, but you have two different ones that you kind of two different styles. You've got the ones you've gotten off the lesser kind of cultists. And then you have the one that you took from Supreme Watcher Tion. All right, let's use the Tion one. Go big or go home. <laughs> um, so you do kind of put it in there, and you notice that like to to reach all the way to the back, you've got to put like almost all the way to like your forearm in there. Um, and you do like feel when you push it all the way into the wall, it kind of like <laughs> clumps in. Um, and you can kind of turn it, and it can go left and right. Uh, which way do you want to turn it? Oh God, let's go right. Okay, so you turn it. You sure? To the right. Was righty tidy and lefty loosey. <laughs> so you turn it. <laughs> and as you are turning it, you feel that it like the stone wall kind of slowly gets a little tighter on your wrist. Slowly gets a little tighter on your wrist. To the point where it's starting to hurt. And as it, you swear it's about to break your wrist and that lasts a little bit. As soon as you do, it just <laughs> and it lets go. And the whole thing turns back. And you notice over to kind of your left now of the torch. A portion of the rock wall pushes back really quickly, almost like it's spring-loaded, just and then slides out. Uh, and all of a sudden, this like damp, just deep smell, I uh, just feel it smells super earthy and moldy, kind of just comes out of this dark passage. Um, and almost right away, you can see that there's a difference between the way this cave complex that you're currently in and this new passage was cut. It almost looks as though this area was older and more ancient um, and it doesn't look like it's the same type of complex structure do you think bullets should we go down this tunnel it smells rank <laughs> <laughs> smells like the deepest orifices of my family's wine cellars <laughs> in well, my I'm experience sure where that sentence is going. <laughs> <laughs> in my experience there's always something good if you follow that kind of smell <laughs> nailed it. it smells like it came from an orifice <laughs> maybe in Dwarfland, but nevertheless i don't see that we have another choice betney what's your vibe on this um <clears throat> well this must be the place that they went um it would make sense that it's here, so my gut tells me if Tion said my father was taken somewhere, he was probably taken down here. I'll go with you. 
Yeah. Right. Let's check it out. Feel bad for your dad. <laughs> um, so you do kind of traverse down this spot, and it's very dark. Um, as you kind of go further, you don't see an end to this tunnel. Um, who's got dark vision and who doesn't? I have dark vision. You feel Is that under our... Yeah, it'll be under your senses. Um, so I think where? Own, uh, so if you look on the left, um, like saving throws and the next column down should say senses, it should be in there. I think the only person who doesn't have dark vision... Yeah, is Zunus and Rowena. So you guys can't see down here. But didn't um, we have a torch of some kind a minute ago? Well, the torch was on the wall. You could take one to um, light it, but um, if you do want to light this place, you'll need some type of uh, uh, some type of light source. Because it's pitch dark. Have, I have a tinder box, so I can light some torches, and I think I have a torch as well. Okay. Um, so you light a torch, kind of crack it open, and you can see it, and it does cast light into this kind of space in front of you. You can't see. This is definitely a more naturally created um, kind of tunnel system. And it and it seems to stretch on just forever. Um, it's hard to kind of see exactly how far it goes. Um, the light of your torch only goes about 60 feet in front of you or so, maybe about 120 that you can see dimly. Um, and you can see that there are natural rises and falls to this tunnel. Um, and in some cases it might even turn and kind of veer into different areas. Does seem to extend out of your sight um, and, and downward at a pretty hefty slope. See that we have another choice. I would say, DM, did we establish which order we're going down the tunnel in? Not yet, so if you guys want to choose, you're more than welcome. Yeah, I would say definitely dark vision in front, and then I would say maybe one of the dark vision people in back, and then me and Zunus in the middle, but I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, I have 60 feet of dark vision, and then put um, people without it in the middle, and then, yeah. Um, wait, so who's it? Thad has dark vision as well, or Zunus has dark vision? Uh, Thad uh, has I dark do. vision, and you have Thad dark vision. Okay, let's do that. Oh. Goes. I'll go second. Then, I'll go behind um, Ivo. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys kind of take this journey down into this deep descent, and... You know, 10 minutes goes by, 15 minutes goes by, and you're still walking. And every step you take seems to be at a lower level. So you can feel that you're descending quite a bit. You've walked for about a mile now, and you haven't really noticed any change. It's still just this huge, long, ancient tunnel uh, that continues kind of down into the earth uh, of this floating island. Um, as you kind of continue, you do notice the sound of rushing water gets a little bit louder as you keep going. Um, you can swear every now and then if you if you turn, you know, take a turn in the tunnel a little bit and kind of follow it, you just notice a hint of a tealish glow just for a brief moment as you kind of walk and then the angle of the tunnel kind of shifts because you're walking and taking another turn and you lose sight of it. Just a little bit kind of hits here and there. Um, you guys want to continue down this path? Yeah. I see no reason not to. Um, so you continue downward and you continue downward. And another 15 minutes, 30 minutes, it's starting to really get hard to kind of keep track of time. You're not sure. It feels like you've been walking for miles. Um, and uh, you are starting to see now, okay, I am descending at a pretty steeper pace even now. And the sound of rushing water just gets louder and louder and louder. Uh, and then suddenly, you, you just kind of follow the natural turn of this tunnel um, for what must have been miles. And you just come upon this this kind of light source near the end of it, maybe about 150 feet away. Uh, and you, here is where you can see some of this, this teal glow is coming from. There is a huge amount of light somewhere beyond this space of this teal purplish glow. Uh, and the sound of running water seems to be coming from that space as well. Um, is there any sort of uh, trace of a magical element about this teal glow? Uh, roll a arcana check for me. 18. Um, 
you do get the sense based on it that it is magical. Um, roll a nature check for me as well. Mm, six. So you're not a hundred percent sure what exactly it's coming from, um, but there is a suspicion based on the light source that you're seeing. There must be some magical properties from some of it. You feel like you've seen the tealish glow in a lot of different sources, so you're not sure, but the purple glow definitely reminds you of like arcane magic a bit. And uh, does the glow illuminate the walls at all? Is are there any uh, any conspicuous grooves or other noticeable attributes on these walls? Not quite. It almost seems like just a light source, and then the the glow is sh is shedding into the tunnel that you're in, uh, but it doesn't cool. seem to be um, activating anything within this tunnel. Bethany, have you ever seen a light like this before? before? No, this is new for me. A weird feeling about this, guys. I wonder, because they, the Erzatsurai, seem to have some strong opinions on world spikes and fish people, they might have some sort of conduit to the underwater world down here. Mm. But in that case, it's good that we have Zunus. Yeah, I can swim. Um, can we can we carry on but get a little cautious once we get closer to the uh, the light source? Yeah, you're pretty close. Why don't you guys all roll a stealth check for me? And is uh, Ivo wearing the rogue boots? Was it? I got. I the think we oh, so, As she walks, you don't hear footsteps at all. What are we rolling a stealth check? Stealth check. Yep. Wow. Natural zero. No, not natural zero, but zero. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as a natural zero. Wow. Seven. I got twelve. Uh, so you, you you try your best to be sneaky, um, but as you kind of approach, you know the. You, you, you actually kind of notice that as you're getting closer to the edge, the rock that you were work, walking on has suddenly kind of changed, not suddenly, but gradually has changed into stone tiles, like it's paved. Uh, and you kind of slip on one of them and you just hear this like, <laughs> as some rocks kind of click off onto this stone um, kind of roadway that you see. And as you kind of continue down with the momentum of your bodies, uh, kind of stumbling onto this space, you stumble onto into a, a huge wide open cavern um, that is quite large. It's probably, geez, maybe like 600 feet, 700 feet from you, away from you, um, and 300 feet or so until you can see the rocky surface. Um, as you kind of look up in awe, as you're kind of stumbling, you do see this is where a lot of the glow is coming from. There are these teal growing bioluminescent like fungi and mushrooms everywhere. Um, there are these crystals that are giving off this arcane purple glow kind of inset into the rooms. It almost looks like stars in here. Um, and in front of you, the stone that you kind of tripped on, you do recognize now, is actually this huge bridge that was spanning this underground riverway. Um, and that's where the sound of the water and this humidity you were feeling was coming from. Um, mm. And you suspect, based on what you saw above, this uh, waterway must have been connected to that that canal you saw in the Urzatsurai tunnels uh, and kind of continues down and, and empties here. Uh, let me show you a bit of a map so you can see it. Um, so currently, that's what you see. Let's show a little closer. Whoa. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if we can cross. That looks pretty dangerous. We're gonna have to build the bridge of some kind. Well, well what's, across the that, what's across the bridge with the wooden planks? That's the uh, question. Looks like a little pond. Roll yeah. a perception check for me. Ugh. Seven. <laughs> uh, you can't quite tell. You can see to the other side. It's relatively easy and you have a bit of a height um, advantage here. Um, but it seems to terminate at another tunnel system. So it kind of hits up against the wall, and in this wall is cut a pretty good size opening. 
Um, one thing you can tell though, why that, that bridge exists, that you can definitely see it. As you look out over this bridge, the bridge is ancient. And the stones are heavily eroded and it's basically crumbling. Um, there are gaps in this bridge. Um, some span halfway across, so you can kind of try to get around them. Some are bigger than others, but there is about a 10 foot gap dead smack in the center of this bridge. Um, so getting across it doesn't seem easy. You'd have to try to jump it, which you could risk falling. Certainly an option you could try. It's only about 10 feet. You think you might be able to do that. Um, it looks like the, the wooden pathway was meant to, um, <laughs> was meant to kind of traverse this river in a safer way. Huh. Um... And DM, do we see the ruins of the hallway beyond that? kind of off to the left that's perpendicular to the bridge. Can we see that? Um, like on the bottom of the screen or the top of the screen? Uh, well, like the middle. The hallway that juts off to the left. Can we see that? Oh, yeah. I kinda, you can see it a little bit. It's pretty dim and a little bit outside of your vision range at that point. But it does seem to extend further into the cavern. Um, so if I okay. move it a bit. You can see kind of to the back wall. Um, it's just hard to make out detail there, but it does seem like another kind of almost like a mesa. Um, what you can see as you're looking there, though, is there is a garrison, like a stone garrison, um, a, on the on the opposite end of this chasm or the opposite end of this river. Um, and uh, it, it's like a two-story stone, kind of austere, very square shape. The architecture, though, looks like nothing you've seen. Um, it doesn't look like anything you've seen above land. Mm. Soon as how many of us can you carry on your back? <laughs> can I do a strength check? Or that's not actually a thing. Uh, what are you trying to do? Like swim with him? If I if I can, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you're about twenty feet above the river right now because the stone is above. Right, but in the event okay. that something happens, could I? Am I a strong enough swimmer to carry maybe one or two of these? Um, you could probably carry one. Right. Two would probably be pushing it. Um, okay. I would say carrying Thad might be a little bit tough. Um, <laughs> he's kind of stout. <laughs> um, but uh, you could probably carry the others without too much trouble. You're you definitely have you're the, you're a very strong swimmer, um, so not anything tough. The challenge is as you you know you would you all can certainly see this. The water is very fast moving. Um, there are giant stone boulders in there that came from this bridge uh, and there's a waterfall that terminates right where the kind of gap is um, mm -hmm. that drops you down probably another 15 feet into a pool of water. And you can't quite see from your angle but you can see a little bit. So it sounds like best to stay clear of the water. It's If it's moving fast okay. and uh, way below us. Um, I mean, it sounds like group, we, uh, we need to take the road more traveled and go down those wooden, uh, the wooden bridge there that takes us to the other side. Um, you know, there's no, obviously we could watch out for guards or potential traps and whatnot, but there's no, there shouldn't be any reason why anyone would, um, you know, be, be waiting to attack us unless we come across someone just patrolling the way. Um, roll a perception check on that again, Ivo. You were in front as well. Thad, you can do that too. Oh, God. I'm getting all the bad rolls out to start. Uh, four. Okay. <laughs> Fifteen for me. So you can see at the top of that garrison, there do seem to be two figures that are standing up, staring out. Um, oh. You can see them. Oh. You assume they can see you. Wait, where's the garrison at? Or uh, they're down you, right? Yeah, I'll circle it for you here. It's going to be this area in green. Uh... Uh, um, they the yeah, they can definitely see you, and you weren't very stealthy coming in. They don't seem <laughs> alarmed, though. Seems like a relatively normal occurrence for the general people to walk into this. They haven't, they haven't can, like sounded uh, an alarm or anything. Can and now I, I have a terrible perception, so I'm really asking Thad this. But can Thad tell if they're the same type of guards that we? saw and battled back in the other um the uh, before we went down the long hallway that area yeah, of the question. dungeon uh, with ran. that with that perception the role that he had uh thad you can see that these don't look like that at all in fact these these creatures don't even look human um they're they, they're definitely humanoid uh, but you see that they have this long um this very straight platinum white hair silver in some cases um and their skin is a dark 
purple. Like almost almost black. Huh. Um, Can we shout out to them? Would they hear us? Oh yeah, you're almost certain they would hear you. Um, I'm trying to think. Dungeon Master, before mm -hmm. you continue, I just want to let you know I can barely hear you. I can hear oh. everyone else fairly well. Here, I'll turn on the game. How's that? Is that better? Way better. Oh, oh my god. Better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I pulled out my my Yeti microphone and I got a boom arm that it'll get it close to my face, but I don't have it yet. So hopefully soon. Oh, it sounds so much better. Um. So uh, would my knowledge of history aid me in identifying these? Um, I will give you a choice of history or nature, and you're gonna roll an advantage because you're a dwarf. Okay. Excellent. You would you would almost certainly know what these are. All right, and I'm gonna roll at advantage. Mm-hmm. So that would uh, be twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-two. Damn. So I these are these now. are colloquially known as dark elves. Um, you uh, know them the as what they are, the drow. Yeah. Um, and in this world, they're a little bit different than some of the others that you might have heard from. Um, they are typically malicious still. Um, but after what's strange about this is you've only heard of drow from ancient history. Um, it's long been suspected that portions of the Underdark might have been raised with the islands. Uh, the islands are pretty thick. They're about, you know, the, the smallest one is 10 miles, like, tall, essentially. So if you think, like, the tallest peak to the bottom of the island is about 10 miles, um, which, which might have grabbed some of the Upper Dark. Tharvan's a relatively big island. It's about 20 miles from peak to bottom. Um, so it's pretty... It was long been suspected that portions of the Underdark probably got sucked up as well. Um, but no one has really been able to investigate it or see it. And any any real research that's into it seems to end in catastrophe. Um, so seeing this is a bit of a shock and kind of stunned to you. Um, but you do know what these are. Um, and did you mention uh, our drow generally considered to be evil? They, they are typically considered evil. Still, you would like everything you've heard about them. They've they've been known to be malicious, malicious. Um, you do also know this about Drow. They typically worship the Spider Queen Lolth. Um, but from what you know of your pantheon, Lolth was killed in the calamity. Mm. Yes. Well, excellent. Um, Drow are not known to be the friendly type. So I, I suggest we don't uh, raise too much alarm. Perhaps if we uh, take the path over to the right, we can pass by unharassed. Run a I'm insight gonna... check for me as well, Thad. Yes. Okay, not too bad. Ooh, twenty. Yeah. So you you can definitely put two and two together. Like like you saw, if they if you could see them, they could see you. Um, so you get the suspicion they could definitely make make out this new group of people arriving. Um, but they they haven't turned hostile and they haven't done anything to seem strange so you definitely could tell like this seems like a normal occurrence for them to see people on this passageway um, so you get the suspicion they're pretty used to seeing Urzatsurai cultists coming into this this space so for the time being you feel like um, they expect people in this space um, and uh, you know they expect Urzatsurai um to, to be here. Somehow they must have some type of alliance or coordination with this group. Okay. Um, Raise the alarm. Uh, yeah, let's try to stay clear of these guys based off of what you're telling us, Thad. Um, probably best to just continue on down that path to the right. I'm not a, a, huge, a very good swimmer, so I'll stay in the middle. I'll follow along with you all if doing crossing yeah, that buddy water system the way down guys buddy system <laughs> buddy system the way down keep a hand on me <laughs> uh i guess can we do uh, some kind of check of the rankings of our swimming ability obviously i imagine i might be uh, the best um technically I also have some rope if we oh rope would rig that up i have rope too um as you yeah, yeah please go for it Ivo. is it that treacherous down that uh, way though, DM, do we really need to be concerned about the um, wooden like bridge over? Roll a perception check. And you, you said you weren't good at like carpentry or smith tools or masonry or anything. 
No, just playing cards and vehicles. Nailed it. <laughs> what what are vehicles? Is it portions or cards? <laughs> it's gonna pop up. <laughs> uh, I got a nine. Nine. You're not sure. Um, it, it, it definitely seems like a big jump for you. I mean, you're pretty athletic and muscular. You feel like you can probably make that jump uh, without too much trouble. Um, in terms of the integrity of the bridge, you're not sure. The thing about the jump is if we go over there, we have to come back. And if we fight with these dark elves, man, if... Apparently. We might find a way out that's more advantageous to us. Yeah, we might not have to backtrack. I'll accept that optimism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to fight these dark elves any more than you do, Zunus. Well, I really want to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> They've done nothing to us, but let's take them down. <laughs> <laughs> You're so violent all of a sudden, Zunus. <laughs> do we want to try to do some sort of... Um, uh test the water, so to speak, for this bridge. Maybe have um, Rowena, oh no, no, have Zunus, because he can definitely swim. Maybe give him a give him a length of the rope to hold onto, and then he can head his way down the, the wood bridge there and see how it's, uh, how it's feeling, if it's sturdy or not. And perhaps if he makes it over, he can tie the rope onto something mm -hmm. and we can and hold use on for some uh, supports as we make our way across. Yeah. It's like a latch. Exactly. Like so who's cool tying guy. the rope to Zunus? Uh, I'll tie the rope. Uh, I'll throw it to Zunus. Okay. Uh, so uh, whoever is going to tie the rope, roll a survival check. Let's see how good your knots are here. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We've been so good with our knots in the past. Uh, how does a five look? <laughs> they, 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 they seem competent. You've done this okay. before. Uh, knot tying isn't particularly difficult. They seem like you give them a couple pulls and they do seem to hold. Well, Zunus, you can swim, so you're not a complete goner if you go down. I'm, I'm glad you even attempted the tie. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess I'm going. Okay, so you go through. Um, roll a perception check for me, Zunus, as you're walking kind of further along. Okay. Ooh, not bad at all. 20. Okay, so as you kind of get close to the bridge, you do notice some of the stones just seem a little too shaky for you to feel good about. So you notice that, hey, that, that looks like trouble, so you kind of sidestep that area and you try to get onto another stone and kind of walk through a little bit as you kind of see some of the gaps go down the 15 or 20 feet to the rushing water below you. Um, you step on one and you notice that it shifts a little bit, so you kind of get off of it real fast and you notice that it does boom, kind of drop into the water. Uh, but you do make it to the bridge without much trouble. Um, and kind of look back at your peers uh, and you say, hey, if you follow this pathway, um, you'll, for the most part, be avoiding any trouble spots. Um, so I'll, I'll say they can follow along behind you without risking falling into the water uh, on some of the weak spots. Um, so you do make it onto the bridge. Um, are you going to try to cross the bridge as well? appears to be sturdier than the, the first few rocks, correct? Uh, what did you get on that perception check again? 20. Um, it it does look sturdy, but the middle of the bridge, a couple of the boards seem to be cut specifically, as if they were intended to break away. Like a booby trap kind of thing. Like a yeah. booby trap. <laughs> Um, guys, I don't feel great about this. Um, <laughs> as a uh, sea creature and uh, avid fan of 80s cinema, I know a booby twap when I see one. <laughs> yeah, and it does look like it's only about five feet. Um, uh, maybe even less than that. You could probably, like, <laughs> hop over. But you did say it, it, it was rushing waters, correct? Correct. Uh, correct. So, which, if you didn't see it, it probably would have been a lot more dangerous, but you noticed... Now you that can... we've noticed it, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with rushing waters? <laughs> <laughs> They're always rushing. What's the big deal? Where's where are they going? Um, all right. I think I may need a more solid plan 
before just going on a creaky bridge that my peers will also have to navigate. Well, if we get somebody across and tie that rope, then we can hold on to it should any uh, boards come loose and potentially, you know, have have uh, an advantageous foothold uh, so we don't get swept away by the current. Yeah, I feel like we need, uh, we've got to get someone across. I still think... Dennis, do you think you can dodge these boards that seem a little shifty and still make it across? I'll give it a shot. And if I can't make it, we have the rope that might be able to help me out in some capacity. Yeah. Uh, I gotta, I'll gotta. i hold on to it. I've got a good, strong grip on it. I won't let you fall. I'll pull you back up if you go under, but try to, try to make it so that you avoid those boards that don't look safe. All right. Uh, so you walk across. You see those boards. You put a little hop in there. Just roll a quick um, acrobatics check for me. I think this is my first acrobatics check. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> 12. Yeah, you get over it with ease. Easy peasy. No trouble at all. It's um, the most generous 12 I've ever received. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I said, it wasn't really meant to be particularly troublesome if you knew what you were looking for it's a pretty easy thing you get the sense this was just made for people that um, weren't expecting this type of setup so most of the azats are i would probably be able to just bypass this without trouble all right cool yeah i guess i i've made it then mm -hmm. um, so as you kind of continue in that area you do see that that, that um edge does lead into another tunnel system that kind of turns a sharp corner and then kind of leads into dark there doesn't seem to be and, there doesn't seem to be any light coming from that space. And I don't have dark vision, nor do I have my torch. Correct. Uh, oh, actually, Ivo, you are because of how long was that rope? I think you have uh, a fifty foot one. It uh, it should say right. Where yeah. It? Oh, uh, fifty feet. Yep. Okay. So let, let's just say you're on the opposite end of the bridge. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna um, put me behind you. Why not? Are you able to? Toss that rope. Tie that rope up to any any rock um, or like pole or anything at the end there. I feel like that's got to be a perception check, kind of. Yeah, you can look around. There's nothing really. The the walls are smooth. Um, so there's know, nothing really. Nothing really to tie to. You could try to tie it to some of the posts on the bridge. Uh, but that bridge is already so it's not unstable as it is, right? Mm. It held your yeah. weight. Right, but will it hold two people? The the far posts, if the posts are sturdy, you know, those are grounded into the the banks of the river, so they're yeah. fine. Yeah, I'll, right, I'll, I'll try a post. Up. Yeah, that sounds like a solid plan. I'll take that. Okay, so you tie it off. Do a nature check, uh, survival check for me too. Let's just see how good you're done. You're, you're... And are you untying it from you and like letting? So you're untying it from you to the post so that. Um, yeah. Ivo has it on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, survival check. Ooh. 17. Okay, yeah. It feels really in there and good. You give it, like, a couple of really firm, like, just to double checks. You're starting to care more about Ivo, so you don't want it to, like, go drowning off. <laughs> uh, so it seems pretty good. Ivo, you're gonna try to cross, too? I'm gonna... No, what I wanna do is I wanna keep the... Kind of be the other anchor for the rope and let everyone else cross, and then I'll cross last. Okay, you want them to, like, kind of hold on to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna hold yeah. on to the rope. Yeah, and uh, so we'll have Bethany go across first then so she kind of followed you in her anticipation <laughs> let me check her bonus hold on she did. She rolled a 4 so <laughs> I really don't want to kill the character that I made because I like her but let's see uh, okay good she's got a plus 2 dex bonus um, so acrobatics plus 3 she does make it across without trouble uh, but she kind of like uh, a little bit um as she's kind of getting across there, I'll say uh, your rope helped her kind of steady herself. Got it. Good, good, good. Look, I'm I'm probably the biggest liability here. I know my strengths, and this is not it. So I'll go next. Okay. Uh, roll a man, uh, roll an acrobatics check for me. Oh God. Ooh, seventeen. All right, you do get across without issue as you kind of like. 
this is how it's done. And you can like walk by uh, without trouble. Shuffling <laughs> <laughs> <Good. laughs> <Definitely> run. <laughs> uh. Now I guess I'm going. Yep. Okay, what am I rolling? Survival uh, check? Acrobatics. acrobatics. I, oh, I, I love acrobatics. 15. Yeah, you make it across with ease as well. Kind of sidestepping the, the trouble spot as you saw it. Um, I saw a little stumble in there. Thad gets a little overconfident. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look, I don't know. Maybe I should have been a thief. <laughs> <laughs> that amulet's going to come in real handy, I think. Uh, <laughs> Ivo, what's your game plan now that everyone's safely across? Then, uh, before I, I want to go across as well, before I do that, can I, can I look and see if I noticed the, uh, the two watchers, the two guards, do they look any different at our kind of, uh, acrobatic, uh, circus show of having all this rope and hesitation? Um, or do they look kind of... Roll an insight check. Let's see if you can read their body language. Um, <clears throat> 16. 16. They do seem... It's hard to tell because they're a ways off. You can see them, but you can't see their facial expressions very well. But you swear they seem to be... Like, one is, like, confused, and one, you swear, is laughing. <laughs> okay. Uh, good to know. So, all right. So I will follow suit uh, and just kind of, like, holding on to the road. Or kind of, what do you call it? Like, um... Kind like of pulling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, roll an acrobatics check. Six. Just enough. <laughs> uh, so you do, you kind of stumble a little bit as you're the last one there. Um, you kind of misplace your foot just a little bit and that, that wood does kind of fall away a smidgen. Um, but you are able to make it pass without trouble. Uh, and so you're all kind of in this hallway and now that you've kind of clustered in, you can see it just kind of like does a quick turn and actually ends at a wooden door um, and like a wooden wall that's been kind of walled up on the edge of this, um, on the edge of this space. Well, I have my thieves tools. Yeah, you want to try to pick it? Yep. Go ahead and roll um, a thieves tools check, um, which is going to be a d20 plus your dexterity plus your proficiency. Um, hmm. I think. Are you an expert in thieves tools? Do you know offhand? Yes, I am. Uh, then you're going to, so your proficiency bonus is two. You double that when you're an expert, so plus four plus your deck, so roll plus seven. Okay. Eight. So you rolled a one? Yeah. Okay. So you, <laughs> <laughs> you try to get in there and. Uh, I think we said last time you already broke one, so you have one left. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um. No, why not? I, I have an idea. I also have a flask of oil. Let's burn this place to the ground. Wait, real quick, just to make sure. We checked if it was unlocked, right? Uh, yeah, so you put your hand on it, try to turn it. <clears throat> it is locked. Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> um, while you are, like, pushing on it, though, roll a, um... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just roll a straight intelligence check for me. Is that? Ooh, uh, 11. Um, this door doesn't seem like the world's strongest door. Okay. I uh, would like to use that uh, magic blade of yours to pierce this inanimate object. Yeah, you do remember you have a you have a weapon that is almost made for this. Its whole purpose is to destroy physical objects. Yeah. Uh, unless anyone has any other thought or uh, foresee any issue that would happen with me destroying this door with a weapon, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So speak now or wherever hold your people. It's either go that or it. we're going back. Yeah. <laughs> Benny, you, any, you have any thought? Uh, no, I think um, if... We're here and 
we got four of us. How many of them could there be in there, you know? Uh, well, hopefully it's not unknowingly foreshadowing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I want to use, uh, go ahead and use the old shatter spike to, um, I'm guessing just try to like break through the door in whatever fashion I think best. I'm imagining that if I just take a blow straight to like the handle, that should be able to, sure. uh, yeah. to puncture it and then we can just pry the door open. Uh, roll, roll an attack roll on it. So roll your d20 plus your hit bonus. Nice, nice. Uh, attack. Um, so I rolled a... Oh, yeah. Uh, 21. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely hit it. Um, roll damage for me real quick. I just want to see how much you get. And then remember your bonus because it's a construct. Yeah, so you, the handle just kind of like slice down. Like it, it hits so hard. Part of the door that was holding the handle just like cracked away and the door just swings open. Nice. That was easy, guys. Now everyone roll Five initiative. Up? I'm just kidding. It's not real. <laughs> I was about to do it. God, I'm such a bad thief. <laughs> we all have our off days. Yeah, you're somersaulting over. Bridges, I gotta bring my A game. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's carry on through that door. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you do get through the door as you open it up. Um, it is also pitch black in here, so only the... Do we, who had the torch, by the way, or is it still lit? I think we're waiting. Okay, okay. And, it, and you still have I it lit. Put it out, but it seems like we would've. I would have had to carry it with me over the bridge. Yeah, would you have? I just want to know. So I see if you see in this room or not. Yes, I would have taken it with me. So okay. that gives me uh, vision by default as well then, I assume. Yes, correct. Um, so you do get into this space, um, and as you enter, you see that it almost looks like a small lodge. Um, it's relatively small, it's not huge. It's meant for like temporary housing. Um, there's some furniture in this area, um, a bit of a small cot, and like a... You know, like a, a partition, like a wooden partition, just kind of keeps some privacy in there. Um, the thing that is the most alarming, though, is kind of smack dab in the center of the floor are the corpses of two men, um, both wearing Urzatsurai cultist clothes. Um, roll a medicine check for me, Rowena. Eleven. Um, you can't tell exactly what killed them or how long ago, but it's been at least a day or so. These corpses have been here for a while. These are that's where I are dead, guys. This isn't good. Well, I mean, maybe it's good in the grand scheme of things for us, but it doesn't bode too well uh, for what goes on down here. Uh. He, do we see any we don't i'm assuming that we don't see any like there's no blood on the floor we don't see like they got stabbed or anything just, um i'll have you roll a um medicine or perception check you can choose uh let's go perception because i have okay. better uh what does a stick skin mean <laughs> uh you do see a bit of blood on the floor although it is a little like a huge mess um they don't seem to have been stabbed they are heavily bruised um which maybe they were beaten to death you're not sure um, all right, shoot, that's weird. I perform a, a, a posthumous last rites on them. <laughs> what does that sound like? Give me a pad. Uh, really just trying to find a flask, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just trying to get in close to be like, uh, what, what do they have on them? <laughs> Roll uh, an investigation check. I will. <laughs> Oh, God, we'll God. take anything off a dead person. <laughs> oh, yeah, only yeah, a four, four, so I think their their items are safe. You rolled a four? Yeah. Um, I mean, they have like the same stuff either. they had before. Um, let's see if we can connect the dots for you here a little bit. Roll a straight intelligence check. Or if you'd like, you can do insight, either one. Oh, well, I'll do that one. Okay. And I will have rolled a 24. Yeah. Um, 
the thing that stands out is you don't see anything particularly special on them. What you notice, though, is one has weapons, one doesn't. One has the symbol of the Azatsurai, and one doesn't. So it looks like something was taken from one of them, at least. Mm. One's been here before. Bethany, do you recognize any of these people? Not no. people, but you know what I mean. I mean, they were people before they were murdered, I guess. Uh, but I, I don't know them. Maybe... Uh... I, don't, I just don't mean to be humanocentric. But... <laughs> Is this the Elves only... are people too. <laughs> Is um, this the only way in and out of this little lodge? No. Like so the there are there are two entrances and exits, so to speak. So the one that you came in from, the one that Ivo broke down, and then another one on the far end. Hmm. Can you see that, or Can you we... want me to zoom in a little bit? No, uh, that's great. Yeah. Can um, we uh, look hmm. around the room to see if there's anything particularly interesting? Um... Yeah. Roll a perception check for me if you're looking. Um, you do notice that as Bethany kind of sees these corpses and understands a little bit of what you shared, that she does seem to perk up a little bit. She seems a little bit... You see a little hope in her eyes. Ah, okay, yeah. I rolled a... I rolled a 20. A natural 20 or a total 20? Ooh. Total 20. No worries. Uh, so you, um, you definitely uh, see a little bit more as you look around. It looks like there was a bit of a tussle... Um, while these folks were, were um, however they were killed. Um, things are kind of strewn about, things are thrown over, it was haphazard. In the um, back corner, kind of underneath the cot, are an uncuffed pair of manacles. Hmm. Oh, manacles? Seen... <laughs> manacles. Uh... Shackles. Straight... Handcuffs. Uh, um... Well, it seems positive for our, our friend Watcher soon. Yeah, Bethany uh, kind of hears that thought and she, she says, I, I think um, maybe this means he escaped. Someone must All have right. killed these creatures. Yeah. Or maybe they downed some kind of poison or something. I mean, that seems like a whole lot of blood on the floor for poison, unless that's a rug. <laughs> uh, it is a rug, but there is blood on the floor. You can't tell these were beaten. They don't seem to, like, die from natural causes or something like that. Safe to assume there was a third party. You get the sense. Yeah, based on what <laughs> Ivo saw and Thad has found, you do get the sense. Unless. <laughs> It's like The Bachelor. Two women, one rose, one stays, one goes. <laughs> um, can we... Oh, go no, ahead. no, no, after you. I was just gonna say, once we're done investigating, we should perhaps consider going through this door with this information we have now. Yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah. Let's carry on. Um, so you guys want to go out of the door you came in, or the door that's kind of leading further out? Um, well, there's I no, the like, door. back in the way we came from BM, it's just a hallway, right? There's no foreseeable, um, other path to go down. Correct. Yeah. It was just like one tunnel that went right into this area. It was like almost, almost as though it was purpose built just for this lodge. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, you get the sense the, yeah, you get the sense there is that Sarai built this as kind of a easier way to traverse. Um, which it also kind of connects for you. It seems like the Ozatsurai use this as a passing point. Since the drow didn't attack you or anything, you assume this is what they were meant to do. Gotcha. Um, oh, yeah, let's continue on through this new door. Okay. Who's going first out the door? Um, I'll go first again. Okay. Um, I'll go second. Okay. Take three. Four works for me. Okay. So you do walk out and you do find yourself on the opposite end of the bridge, the area in that cavern that you saw before. And it is essentially a huge mesa, like a big rock shelf uh, that's kind of um, naturally kind of eroded into this space here. Um, you see where the stone bridge connects to the other side of this and how it connects. Uh, this whole space is just littered with stalactites and debris and rocks. There is a little bit of foliage around here, mostly that bioluminescent uh, fungus that you saw and mushrooms, some ferns that seem pretty bright as well, although they're not glowing. Um, the garrison across the way, you see two more drow at the front of the entrance, uh, and then directly across from you, there seems to be a, um, what's the word, uh, like a, a huge stalagmite that kind of almost connects with a huge stalactite from the top, 
um, kind of in front of you as well that takes up a, a big chunk of your view. It's kind of that big black area directly south of you. Choice but to engage with the drow somehow or other. Unless we just want to slip through here and see what's on the other side. Perhaps we can uh, speak to them and see if they know anything of the people who have been inhabiting this place. What language do the drow speak, DM? Um, you wouldn't know, but let's see if we can give you an educated guess. Roll a history check for me. Fourteen. Um, you're not a hundred percent sure. Um, you know, you never really studied the Underdark. You didn't think you would need to. Uh, but you assume if they seem to be elves, maybe they speak Elvish. Um, I can't speak Elvish, but if any of you guys can, I would say let's give it a shot. I don't know. I do. I speak Elvish. Remember, I uh, beefed up my languages at the last time. Nailed it. That's awesome. Um, what languages? Yeah. What languages do you all know? Let me just double check. I uh, do. Does Zunus all know, or do all of us know? Um, well, uh, Zunus, me might not know what you speak. I just wanted to, here. I can look through it real quick. So, common and infernal. I speak common, dwarvish, elvish, gnomish, and primordial. Okay. I speak common, draconic, halfling, sylvan, thieves' cant, and that's it. I've got all of those. Uh, yeah, we've got Dracon Draconic, Infernal, and Dorvish in spades. Okay, yeah, solid. Um, so, um, who wants to try talking to these two drow at the garrison? I think Zoon is the only one with Elvish. Elvish. Okay, so Zoon, you want to try talking to him? Yeah, I guess just to get a better grasp of where we are exactly and what's going on. Kind of to you. Um, only thing to remind yeah, you is they absolutely. expect, um, based on what Thad saw earlier, um, they do expect Urzatsurai. So perhaps you should are... take, we should arm you with the uh, Urzatsurai symbol. Right, but I'm not very well versed in the history or customs, so I may expose myself as a fraud right away. Perhaps, but... Just don't taller. talk a lot. Keep it, yeah, keep it short. Just keep it cool, man. Be Hi, cool. That's all right. <laughs> what up? Uh, you do see that they see you at this point, and they kind of, like, they don't really say anything, but they kind of, like, head nod in your direction. Maybe I'd like to bring Rowena in, and I'll translate for her. Okay, well, let me Because you may on. be able to... Uh, perhaps improvise and it's at Sarai history better than I? Perhaps. I'll put on my pendant and you, do you have one, Zunus? Do you have their symbol on you? Or I can lend you one. I have several. I'll take one, yes. Or did I leave it stuck into the wall back there? Oh, uh, no, you took it out with you. Okay. Here you go, Zunus. Received. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, it's like film school. I'm handing him a lens. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's go talk to them. Okay. Good luck, guys. Break a light. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Represent us well. <laughs> don't fuck it Can up. Can I run a deception check, or is it not yet the time for that DM? It kind of depends on what you want to say to him. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, guys, right, can well, we, I wanna... can we do a game plan to start? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I was just going to keep it casual. And how about I'm the girlfriend of Urzatsurai? Or you're like half Urzatsurai, Zunus, because you're fish. Yeah. You got wind of this. You came up from the depths to be a part of... You're like their, their man in the sea. You want to be a part of what they got going. Gotcha. And I'm your human girlfriend. Got it. Okay. This plan is solid. <laughs> yeah, feel feel right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a backstory right, when you started dating? Like, what's that? 
Yeah, how did you meet? Um, uh, it was on a, an app. <laughs> <laughs> there was a geyser, and Zunus came flying up through the surface. It's actually pretty much my origin story, so yeah, yeah the, the best oh, meet cute of all time. <laughs> um, about that, any feedback? Yeah, we're, like, workshop this idea, you know. It all sounds, uh, sounds good. Yeah, yeah sounds these good. people don't see us brainstorming at all. Okay. And for me, uh, just read the room. Just see how it goes with that. Oh. Don't speak out of turn. Hello, fellow is that all right? <laughs> all right, uh, let's go over to them. Hail. Hail. Um. Zunus, babe, could you translate for me? Yes, yes. Hello. Hi. This is my um, girlfriend, and uh, I speak Elvish, but I'm not. I don't really know much about the Zatsurai culture since I'm kind of new to the land, so I'm just going to let her speak and I'll translate for her if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> wow, Zunus, you really put well, it that's... all out there. That's rather uncommon, but I... It's, well, I, I just don't want to make us sound foolish. Uh, roll a persuasion <laughs> check. Actually, roll a deception check, <laughs> Zunus. <laughs> I'm not great at deception. <laughs> I love when I get to improvise. What did you roll? Uh, 16. Oh. Um... Yeah, I think you didn't, you didn't roll very good either, so we'll give that one. Uh, okay, well, I, I guess it's unusual, but that's fine. Strokes for different folks, huh? Okay, we're just passing through. Um, I would love to know, I think what you're doing is so noble, and I would love to know more about it. And I assume, Zunas, you're just going to translate this, so we'll skip that portion. Yeah. I, I, um, the I only thing I want to know Valley is... <laughs> song. The only thing I want to know is if you do decide to say something different than what she says. So if you decide to, like, take a cur take a turn. Uh, gotcha. Uh, I uh, agree with everything she just said, so okay. we can move forward. Yeah. Uh, it's rather strange that you don't know what we're doing here. I didn't... Uh, I wasn't under the impression the Azatsurai were letting other people down here. He's like their man inside. He's like their Matahari. And um, it's he just wanted to show me. I'm sure it's all on the level. Trust me, I, I can't retain very much anyway. So we're just passing through. But, you know, if you guys are in the middle of something, we will just take our servants and keep going. Well, we're always in the middle of something. This is a god post regarding the bridge. Typically, yeah, we... when one of your uh, colleagues come down here, they just use the portal and go. It's not as if, you know, small talk is very strange. I'm uh, quite taken aback. It's rather nice. I'm quite, quite glad you're being polite today. In that case, I guess we'll just go ahead, you know. I'm not very polite to you. Well, it's none of, none of your people typically talk to me oh god that's so messed up i know when i first met him i thought he was just a fish man but um he really showed me the beauty of who he is inside and i'm sure you're beautiful inside too i mean to my people i'm considered quite pretty on the outside you might not recognize that being what you are but i guess that's not the real problem here uh in either case what is it that you need to do are you trying to use the portal or are you Going somewhere else? More about this portal before you know. We know if we want to use it. Uh, and he kind of looks at you specifically, Zunus, and he says, It's very irregular that she's asking about the portal and you don't know about it. Is there something that you need help with? Or... Oh, you brought it up, honey. I didn't bring up the portal. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're Like I said, we are kind of new to, you know, the Azatsurai lifestyle, so... <laughs> Or just kind I of wasn't aware it was a lifestyle choice. I was under the impression this was more of a organization of some type. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Uh, what, what he means is we haven't been dating very long, and 
he, you know, he talks a big game. He wants me to know about these under underwater folks, but trust me, it'll all go out of my head tomorrow. I'm just like that. So why don't you tell me more about this portal? Uh, well, it's uh, roll a persuasion check. Uh, and I'll let I'll let Rowena roll it since she's kind of the one doing the talking. He's a little enamored of you. He's not. Normally, small talk is not what they're used to at this guard station. <laughs> oh, I, think so. I was just, if, if I didn't get a chance to talk too much, I it all comes out at once. Uh, 17. Um, well, I, I guess it really wouldn't do any harm. You're already down here, and I can see that you have the symbols, so... Seems okay to me. Um, it's it's our phage rush portal, the magical innocence of the Underdark. Um, typically, tra- teleportation in the... Uh, and the Underdark is not possible, but with um, with the use of these magical phage resh portals, uh, it is actually possible to travel to other areas of the Underdark on other islands, and it's um, quite useful for us. You see, um, we don't typically, even before the the breaking, we weren't uh, known to go above land too commonly, and um, travel was quite important to be able to do from. Uh, different regions to different regions um, but obviously that's impossible once you know things are in the air and no longer together so our our lady Lolf um, sacrificed herself to create an area we could travel in uh, exchange for further worship so she created this for us to be able to travel from other areas of the underdark that were separated by the calamity oh. Can you tell me about her? Uh, well, she's ruthless and beautiful and vicious. Um, one would say she's fair in her cruelty, um, and she teaches us to be strong so we can survive down here. My father had a second wife like that. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, if we were to step in this portal, just hypothetical, where would we come out? Uh, well, that's actually up I to mean, you. I mean, a specific area of the Underdark? Oh, yes, um, our mage typically handles all of that um, particular process, process. but um, again, it can actually go to a few different locations depending on where it has been attuned to. Uh, the challenge of that... Um, what did you roll in that persuasion check again? 17? Um, the challenge there is a mage has been missing for several days and we don't we don't know what's befallen her we don't know if she's still alive and we don't know if we'll be able to use the portal again the captain may be able to at least activate it to the last location it went um, but um, I'm not certain the last time it was used a colleague of yours used it and traveled to Wadep Um, can you tell me more about this colleague? Um, I mean, I didn't really meet him. I saw him a bit um, under his hood. Um, he seemed to have dark skin. Dark skin. Yeah, he seemed as if huh. he was in a large hurry. He traveled by himself, which is also rather strange. Typically, um, a contingent of the Azatsurai would be down here. Oh, God. Um, wow, it seems like you guys are having quite a hard time uh so i'm guessing this portal it's no good without your mage indeed that is true um the real challenge is she had the um the keys um to activate it the the crystals that are needed to attune to the different locations if we don't have it um it will be difficult to create another and i'm guessing you know you were so nice to us, but I'm guessing she wouldn't be too thrilled to see us skulking around these parts, huh? Uh, well, the concern is she might be in trouble. Um, perhaps she would be rather grateful to see you. Um, I don't know because we don't understand what's happened. Oh god, that sounds awful. Um, do you mind if I go and just couple feet that way i'm just gonna translate your words for my companions they're just you know our servants 
Um, and we will we will see how to proceed. We will definitely either you know get out of your hair and go back up through the temple if that's possible, or perhaps we could help you. We'll see. Uh, of course, take your time. If you need more answered, I can get the captain for you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Lunas. Thank you. That was really helpful. That guy um, is a homie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the nicest person we've encountered by far. <laughs> and he, he happens you know, to be an evil dark there. elf. <laughs> Swords flashing, gun blazing. Sometimes it just requires a little finesse. And you forget that I was a noble woman, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's got charm. What, what land are you from? What uh, accent? of nobility was that i'm just gonna yeah. let you assume whatever you thought it was so i'm not incorrect because it was tough the hardest the hardest accent for me to pull off is the one that i need to do the most which is like a british accent and i can't do it to save my life um i practice consistently and it doesn't matter i'm like so bad at getting the dialect good <laughs> but i endeavor to try um okay so um do I need to recap this, or can we assume they've heard this transpire? <laughs> well, I just want to know, overall, how did you think it went? <laughs> <laughs> like, give me like a, like a Metacritic store if you could, that'd be great. <laughs> um, okay, so, they have, I don't know if I spelled it right, they have this phase rush portal that takes them from Underdark to Underdark across Yaren, I assume, for their rights to free worship. Uh, and this one, the most recent person who went through was their mage slash lady who's very beautiful, ambitious, and dangerous. And he went to Wadep. Wait, no, our colleague went to Wadep. Dark skin ah. was in a hurry. Watchers and he, oh, Watcher Sam, you think? That's what I thought. Um, and funnily enough, Wadep was where we were supposed to be going before Zunus pulled out the god spike and everything went to hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, to clarify through my terrible accent too, the information you got from this kind of lowly drow guard um, is, so yeah, yeah, one of your colleagues came by a day or so ago, used it, asked to travel to Wadep. Um, I also translated Wadep, just a point of clarity on floor here. The dark elves, the drow, wouldn't call it Wadep. They call it their name for the region in the Underdark, but you can kind of translate from there. Um, and, um, the, um, the mage is just missing. You don't, she didn't use the portal. You don't know where she is, um, because you didn't ask, okay. but he didn't say she used the portal. Just point of clarity. Thank you. Yeah, and the mage seemed very scary from what he said, but also when I pressed him further, he thought that she would be happy to see us. Ostensibly, maybe we could help, which is somewhat encouraging, but keep in mind that we're... We have some ideological differences because they are trying to thwart whatever Zunus is doing. Um, and they also seem very nihilistic. Yeah. Not this guy in particular, but his superiors. And um, yeah, so I'd be curious about, can, you know, should we help them, whatever? Well, how do we feel about them? And should we take this portal to Wada? I think we should try our luck with them portal despite the fact that he said the captain might be able to send folks out i think we should try and check it out ourselves first i am curious who our colleague is that's in there knowing that we've made quite a few enemies along our way oh it certainly sounds like watcher sim due to his darks yeah all right daughter all right which Wait, so we're we a big fan use... as is betany obviously <laughs> We can use the portal. I thought they said that they we couldn't use it because we didn't have the crystals weren't there or something like that. Maybe I yes. Heard. Yeah. You but you can't even activate it without the crystals uh, from the mage. Um, but what he was saying is no missing. one. Correct. Yeah. And the mage is missing, and no one knows how to change the or activate necessarily the portal. But the the captain might know at least how to get it to the last place it was at. You know, like, if you know how to turn on a TV, the TV might go to the same channel as on last time, but no one knows how to change the input, so... Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good... Uh, the best analogy I can give you. Good analogy. It's a very Apple genius. Have you used the one before at, at Apple? Um, so I think, I think we definitely we need to get out of here. Um, 
seems like they're friendly. They immediately attack us. Uh, so they seem like they're going to be helpful to an extent. My, I feel like maybe we need to talk to this captain if I think they can get us to, to, um, uh, what is it? Use the phase rush portal. Um, my only thought is, what will they think of the dead folks back in that cabin? And what kind of implications they might have with us? Since they did see us go point. through that and then come out here. Uh, I mean, we could co we could totally just kind of blow over it and like let them think what they want. I mean, I feel like maybe raising the alarm and telling them might be a bad idea. Um, either, I mean, maybe we should just go full steam ahead and go see to see their captain to see if they can get the portal to work. Yeah, it seems we could play dumb and say we didn't even see these people. Seems to me, yeah, like the moving quickly is the key element here. Being fast, hopefully talking to their captain before they even go investigate and find the bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I think let's do that. We're all on board. Um, and to get to the... Talk to the cap, captain, try to get out here. What did um, Rowena and Zunus... Have? Clearly they saw we were all group. What exactly are myself, that, and bet me to you guys? Servants? You guys were... Our servants. Sorry about that. That's all right. We have more servants than there are people, uh, or <laughs> masters. It's you guys roll ridiculous. Deep. Okay, servants. Just in case it's they ask. Yeah. We all should have a little bit of a backstory. Um, that is clearly the turtle of the group, I think. Um, <laughs> so I think. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so I think uh, we go ahead with with. Um, talk, trying to, if you want to talk to them to see about this idea of talking to the captain to um, get on the portal, I think that's the way, we, way to go. Unless anyone has, thinks we go should go about in. this different. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, yeah. Do we Sorry, not to from our thought? Do we also want to try to see if we can explore this? area a little bit more and then come back to them or should we just go straight to talk with them I think again? it might look a little fishy if we explore since people just come and go pretty ca sure. or pretty uh, without any weird uh, diversions it sounded like it's True. very business -like. and we're also right. we want to we want to expedite our exit since there's two dead bodies back yeah in the and yeah. also like look where we fit in also this seems like something that would cost us money or gold coins. <laughs> Good thing we've got plenty. Plenty of gold. I know, but it just seems like a Disneyland ride or something. <laughs> so you so do this. You're not concerned about bodily harm, but you're concerned about losing gold coins. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's go talk with... You want to go ask them um, uh, these these fellow guards to talk to their captain, talk to their supervisor, the old, I want to see your manager. Exactly. All right, let's go back, Zunus. Let's do it. Oh, but before you all go, it sounded like there was a little bit of confusion around uh, the Isasari? What, what or Zatsurai. Zatsurai. Remember, that's a cult, not a race of people or anything of that sort. Like, the fi sure. fish people are not the Zatsurai. Yeah, you can't be like half a Zat or Zatsurai. Oh, I know, but I was trying to make the connection. And I apologize for any insensitivity towards the fish people. <laughs> I was just trying to make the connection that... <laughs> we nailed it. It was, it was it, of interest. It actually does... Yeah, it actually does tie in because um, Lord Ad, um, there were amphibious type fish creatures that you saw communicating with the Urzatsurai, although they're different than Zunus. Uh, one not aware of what that is might be confused. So I, I gave you bonus points and I made some of the difficulty checks a little easier on you because of it. So if you tie in lore, um. things are easier. That's the way that works. 
But am I generally in the right space that... Am I getting warmer that my fake story holds up because this is of interest to Zunis because they're messing around with the Underdark and the water and he's a fish man? Uh, yes, your story ties in that what what you said about him being new to the Urzatsurai could be believed with a good enough persuasion check which you rolled uh, because they've seen similar sea creatures with the Urzatsurai. All right, we're back. Hello, sir. Thank you for giving us so much of your time. I swear we'll be out of your hair in a second. Uh, my friend, my servant, and my boyfriend here, and I have come to the realization that it does, in fact, make a lot of sense for us to try out the portal. You know I'm more Deppian, so um, we would love to just shoot in there and take a little ride, and then we'll be out of your hair forever, I promise. And you know what? This guy, Zunis, he's going to convert all of Wadzeth to your way of thinking. Uh, well, I mean, it's not quite what I expected or asked for, uh, but I could get the captain. He has the keys to the portal, but as I said earlier, it won't it won't work. Um, you could, you're more than welcome to look at it, but I don't know how to turn it on for you, and neither does the captain. Oh, you'd be surprised what the five of us can come up with. So yeah, let's see the captain. Okay. Wait right here. I'll, I'll bring him for you. Uh, so he kind of goes inside. Uh, and partner in crime kind of lazily just like staring. He doesn't really care about any of the stuff that's happening. He's kind of waiting outside. Um, and out walks um, your new drow friend um, with um, another drow. A um, little bit older. You can kind of see his hair is the same, just bright stark white um skin seems a little bit more uh wrinkled though it's just strange for an elf it must be very old if you're starting to see some wrinkles here i um, mean his eyes are almost completely white uh, his armor also seems to be a little bit more um filigreed um kind of walks out and he looks at you and he says um oi what is it hey i'm uh, Roberta, and this is my fish boyfriend, and we were just talking to your very helpful, uh huh, uh, uh soldier here. And we all we want to do is just use the portal, it's totally on the up and up, it's cleared with your men in Wadep. I'm Wadepian, and this guy, Dunis, here is going to convert everybody in Wadep to your way of life. It's actually cleared with the higher ups, he was just showing me around, but now, um. Now that we found you, we figured we'd get a jump start on our mission. So I know the portal might not work, but can you please give us a try? Oh. Well, that's it's quite regular, isn't it? Um, we don't typically expect friends of these people to come down here and do all this stuff. Uh, who told you to go and talk to these people? And then he kind of like looks up and he keeps talking to it and um, kind of talks to him a little bit. Um, and they kind of like, you know, whisper. You, you notice they're speaking a different language, and neither of you understand that language. Uh, and he kind of looks back at you and he goes, uh, Well, he already told you the portal isn't working. We could uh, fix it, but we need our mage back. Ah, uh, the mage. Your mage last seen. Uh, roll a persuasion check. I'll add advantage because you have a little bit of a story going here. Oh, baby. Um, 20. Um, so uh, he kind of continues to share a little bit of where she was seen and, and says, like, she was uh, last seen kind of looking in this in this Mesa area um, for, um, like, components for her magical spells because they typically cultivate some of the fungi. Um, she's not – he's not really sure where they – where where she was um but that's what she said she was going to be doing and the fungus as you kind of look around you see typically grows most along the edges of the cavern i kind of where it butts up against the rock wall oh that's why you got this bioluminescence whatever fungi it's it's magical yes oh you're not a man of many words okay um <laughs> 
Goonis, do we want to just, you know, look over the portal? I mean, we've come all this way. I think we should. Yeah, you know, WhatsApp is no friends of mine now, but I kind of do miss its rolling green hills and such. So, um, you know, I'm feeling oddly homesick, and one thing leads to another, and I'm sure we'll be looking for this mage if we don't get out of here. I said that all sotto voce, it's the Goonis. Okay, um, let's, uh, may we just look at it? You'd be surprised what we could come up with. Maybe we could fix it for you. Ah, <sighs> well, all right, but... Don't be long. So he kind of takes you down there and you see him get a big key out of his thing. He does open as you kind of walk in that space. Um, you see that it is essentially a big cavern inside this huge stalagmite stalactite combo um, that uh, leads into kind of an open space. And it um, goes back a little bit of a ways. And through these giant metal bars, you see um, a huge crystal, like 10 feet, 15 feet. Um, tall with other bigger crystals not quite as big maybe half the size kind of varied around it and it's brightly growing, glowing purple the purple glow is actually coming out of the cavern it's so bright it's almost a little blinding in this kind of space it's not very not very bright um, kind of <laughs> opens it the door swings open and he lets you inside I mean you do feel like this magical hum as you enter this space I is the rest of our group in with us? Uh, if they want to be. Yeah, let's get them all in. Absolutely. Sure. All right, come on. And uh, fulfilling my role as servant, I'll, you know, take any burden of uh, Rowena's if she's investigating. Uh, my lady, anything I can help you with? Thank huh. you, Thad. I'm so sorry about this. I swear I'll buy you a drink later. <laughs> Thad, roll a performance <laughs> check, and I'll give you advantage for the effort. <laughs> For who? Uh, Thad. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one trying to do it, so we'll see how it goes. 18. All right. Yeah, so far it seems like you have been able to pull off the role of servant well. Heavily armored <laughs> servant. <laughs> uh, so you do see this uh, giant crystal in front of you. Doesn't seem like there's a door or anything, it just looks like this huge crystal. I'd like to investigate the crystal. Um, yeah, I think we should. See if Betty kind of oh, the call. words of Rowena Soto Voce. See if she has any knowledge of what's going on here. Uh so you kinda ask Betty to kinda come and check it out? Yeah. Well, yeah, she she rolled a natural twenty, so um she kinda walks up and you see her a little bit and like for the first time in a long time you get the sense that she's finally feeling like she's on the right path. Um and kind of trying to find what happened to her father and and, and, and just a ray of hope that he might actually be alive. Uh, so she kind of walks through this space and puts her hands up and you see her kind of close her eyes and she's, um, she's almost kind of muttering to herself. Um, it almost sounds like a little bit of poetry under her breath. And she kind of like comes back and kind of straightens up and she's like, it, it's waiting for something. It's definitely magical um, but I think they're right I think if we don't have these crystals that somehow engage this it won't work but I do think it is it is possible to take us where we want to go do we get the crystals that was a question for anybody but <laughs> or did uh, they say where we get the crystals they, they said it was on the mage so um, I, I think that's probably oh, yeah. the best place to start. You know, um, if it helps me find my dad, I'd, I'd absolutely want to do that then. All right, um, let's find this mage. Yeah. Not gonna be in here though, right? Well, wasn't this? So I guess. DM, just to recap real quick, we're, we were show, we were going to be shown where the mage was last seen by the captain, right? Well, the, the captain didn't see where she was last seen. Last thing he knew from the mage that he was shared with um, Rowena was that she said she was going to go out to collect components for her spells. Um, gotcha. and, and the things that she normally would collect are like the, the vegetation that grows in this space. Um, you can just look around and see some of it. The, the, the more lush spaces... 
seem to be around the perimeter of this space. Um, one thing though, just of note to kind of add to a little bit of what you see while you're here. Um, so as you've kind of investigated this mesa, you do see a few things. So um, you, you do see that this space also overhangs this pool that the river kind of ran into. Uh, and the pool is another about maybe 15 feet below you um, as it kind of goes in there. There is a bit of a rock ledge that seems to kind of go back into its own tunnel system uh, the other way. Um, and uh, in this mesa that they're in, there are a couple of, like there's almost like a fork, like it's a road um, and two paths kind of diverge. They do seem though to go into darker tunnels with no light on the other ends. Um, and, and it's, it, it, it reminds you of what the tunnel looked like coming to this place. So you assume if you leave, um, you're gonna be walking off into an unknown section for miles. Which is a possibility if you wanna keep exploring and not check this place out. It's just something to consider. Oh, I wish we could just find a way to activate these crystals. Use the portal effectively. Uh, so we, yeah. I guess we don't know exactly how to translate or transition from these crystals into the portal. Yeah, you don't know how to use the check. crystals. Uh, well, I with what the with what the with what Bethany rolled, she rolled a natural twenty. So she she pretty much is very confident. The only way you're going to make this portal work is with those crystals. Um, she might be able to suss out how to use them. Um, and the first drow, um, Rowena's friend, let's say. Um, did share that he thinks the captain might know enough to at least get it on, but not change the island to travel to. Because you could technically use these to go to other locations. It doesn't just have to be Wadep right. from what it made it seem. So if you want to go to Wadep, you probably just need to get the crystals. If you want to go somewhere else, um, you need to hope you can use it correctly. Well, let's. why don't we do, if Benny thinks we can use them, why don't we take some and use them in the portal? To the group. <laughs> what does group think of this? Take, yeah. take what and use them in the portal? The crystals that she sees here. Uh, that's what I think we should do, because we do want to go to Wada, because Water Sim might be there. Yeah. Isn't, isn't this thing the portal? These crystals? That's what I thought, too, yeah. Yes, that and Zunus are right. Uh, you, need, oh, you need the specific okay. crystals that were attuned to activate this. And the only person that had them was the mage. It was kind of the keeper of this area. What? Do... Yeah. Ask ben, do you know do you know which crystals to, or how to activate them? You seem to have a good sense of this room and this place. Do you think you could activate it for you? Uh I think I could I could pull it off. I do think I understand it. Um I don't know until we get them, but I I do think if we were able to find them I could probably figure it out, yeah. All right. Let's, give a shot. Let's, look, let's do it. What, what are we looking for exactly? Uh, so the uh, the captain kind of hears that, and he goes um, kind of behind you. He says, "All right. Well, listen. If you're gonna help us, then help us. If you're just here to waste more time, I don't know if we're gonna keep this open all day. Uh, if you want to help us and find the mage, then let's go. Uh, but otherwise, you know, go about your business." We want to help you and find the mage. Okay, well, go looking. I told you where we uh, we knew her last location to be. Uh, other than that, I don't know if I'll be able to help, but uh, that's about it. Uh, all right, I guess let's put a button in the old crystal biz and go find this mage. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, no one in our, some people in our group did promise help to help him out. <laughs> I just don't know where else to go. Kind of okay, let's go. Uh, let's go searching for the mage. Um, yeah. Does the we'll captain continue? Didn't the mage go use the portal? The northwest? No, the mage went mage. to go collect fungus and shit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So we oh. can track down the mage in this as general far as vicinity. We know, yeah. yeah. Okay. We don't need to use the portal. Watch Sim use the portal. Right, okay, so I get it now. Cool. But we eventually want to use the portal, which is why we have to find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Alright, well, let's go find this mage. Yeah. Okay. 
but yeah. I would say we probably mm-hmm. don't want to go back um, in the maze of tunnels from which we came down to the southeast. We probably want to see what is, else is going on in this immediate area, and then maybe like the north northwest kind of stuff there to start maybe um yeah if you want to check there roll a perception check for me um that Mm. seven uh it's all right that's not very hard to see um again there are there are these fungi pretty clustered in this space um in this vegetation so like on your map you can kind of see a little bit of the ledge um, if you kind of look up, you do see that there is almost like a like a mossy kind of lichen wall that kind of comes down that does seem to be an optimal place to search um, for things because you're pretty much right next to it. So, And it's not very far from the garrison, so it might be a good place to start. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, uh, so you do kind of walk over to that area, uh, and as you see, you kind of see about... 10 feet above you, so just out of like jumping distance essentially, unless you can really get up there, is a bit of a ledge. It, it does seem like it goes a little bit deeper in, uh, into the kind of cavern wall, so it might lead to a different space or an opening. Um, it might be a little bit tough to jump up, but you think most of you guys can probably do it. Dungeon Master, on my screen I'm still looking at the green square. Yes, um, so... Are we further along than that now? Basically that ledge is this orangey oh, okay. area if I can circle today okay. um, so you can kind of see like there's a lot of fungus kind of here it does seem to be a pretty pretty good place to harvest this particular stuff if that's what you were trying to find her so do you think as a group can we all jump up that high that far up mm, you might have to get Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give it a I'm shot. It I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, str- I'm strong. somewhat athletic. But yeah. So who's going up first? I'll go. Ivo will go. Okay. Uh, Ivo, go ahead and just roll an athletic check for me. So you trying to like jump up, grab the edge and see if you can get up there. Oh, no. <laughs> so even though I have plus five for athletics, I rolled a one. So That's I'm all right. Six. For you, it's pretty easy. It's not particularly hard. It's within your stuff. So you do get up there. Um, you kind of like scramble up and pull up. As you get up there, though, um, it does seem... Uh, what's the word here? It does seem uh, like it, it does go further in. It actually kind of goes into a cave system. Um, that that space, though, is is... is a little dim there does seem to be more uh bioluminescence and that glow coming from inside so it's not completely pitch black but it's a little bit dim so, so you assume it goes farther in based on that yeah gotcha um okay does, does uh, everyone else want to come on up and yeah. kind of help you and throw the rope down as well to kind of uh pull you up so should, uh, should so be easy. Roll. Athletics check, state. No, if he's rolling the rope down, you can all just climb up pretty easily. Uh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Let's do it. All right. So, can I just get yep. a marching order? So, I go first. Yeah, I go first. Uh, I'll go next. Okay. I'll bring up the rear. I'm a servant after all. <laughs> okay, Brittany will follow. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Uh, so you're all in your first. space. Um, first thing you kind of notice is it does kind of fork in a couple of different ways. Um, one um, kind of seems to go a little bit further down, kind of to that same path that you saw leading out of this cavern in the first place. And another one seems to kind of go into um, uh, into uh, another area, kind of into a turny spot. Um, there is more light coming from what would be, I think, the right side of your screen than the left side of your screen. Let's go I to the light. Let's go to the light one. Um, so how are you trying to get through here? Are you going kind of sneaky or are you just going through? What's the game plan? Um, 
No, I, not sneaky. I mean, we're not going to sprint. I'd say a normal okay. tr trot. Um, so you do kind of walk up um, and you kind of, again, come to another kind of divergence here. Um, one area kind of seems to um, spiral a bit downward. You can kind of see the, the ground kind of tilts down. Uh, and one area kind of goes to the left and then up a bit from you. God, so many forts in the road. <laughs> Is there a light come more clearly from one spot over the other or one path? Uh, yes, so the area that spirals upward does seem to be brighter. They say we go brighter. I imagine the mage would do the same. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, uh, there so I you... say a mage. <laughs> so you all do follow along uh, as you kind of go this way. Yeah, and you kind of follow this pathway as it goes through. Um, and Ooh. you do walk into this space as it kind of goes through. Uh, and again, you see uh, another fork. Did and everyone is following Ivo? I assume yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ivo, Speaker. you went first. I, um, as you kind of come into this space, um, you do notice a lot of a lot of bright light is um, shining uh, from this area. There is a virtual like cacophony of light coming from the space. It is. There is funguses here and plants of different colors and shades. They're all growing, glowing with bioluminescence. Uh, and I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, if you could, as you enter into this area. I have a 19. 19, okay. So you, you kind of feel a little like entranced by this these mushrooms, um, but you're able to shake it off just a little bit. Um, roll a um, perception check as you kind of look at this space. And are you trying to do anything specifically? I don't want to guide you too far here. I mean, we're looking for a, a warm body. Okay. Looking for the mage. Uh, I rolled a 14. 14. Yeah, oh, sorry, you just so see... Uh, it's 16, 16, 16. Um, yeah you you just see these these mushrooms in front of you um, they they're just they're, they're it's so it's so compelling to look at these things uh, hmm. do uh, do we know does I guess I'll ask the group do you guys know is there any um, should we be taking some of these is there any sort of medical or um, magical power that comes from them that we could use in our, in our journey? Should we use this opportunity to walk over to the bottom of the mail? Bethany? Does anyone? Uh, I guess I could look. Um, so Bethany kind of walks up uh, and, and tries to check that out as she kind of gets close to it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a fail. Okay, so as Bethany kind of walks up to the spaces, you ask her to check these things out. Uh, she kind of kind of goes down and you, uh, Ivo, you almost recognize this because you were close enough to feel it as well. She just has this like complete doe-eyed look to her expression now. She's almost completely catatonic, but still standing. Just like there's no, like nobody's home. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Uh, and as she's kind of like in that area, you just hear like a faint, tiny little pink and then all of a sudden, this huge just web just pulls her through, and now she gets sucked through what looked like it was a like a like you ever like felt like earth or like mud or dirt that's like hardened, so it looks like it's rock but it's not. She gets pulled through this space in the wall that was made of that stuff by this the spider web, kind of up and out a little bit. And I need everyone to roll initiative. Whew. Oh, yeah. roll one check. Initiative. Initiative. Get ready for battle. Oh, uh, of it's course we, we sent the poor girl through herself first. Yeah, you think you could keep trying to make Bethany do all your checks for you, but some of those are dangerous, so. <laughs> Nine for my initiative. I got 19. Okay. Three. Uh, three for Ivo. Rowena, what did you say you got? 
Nineteen. Uh, Zunus, what was yours? Nine, I Nine. believe. Let me double check. And then Thad? Yeah. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Insert. Eight spiders. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, what you see uh, in your view, I'm going to show you here. Give me one second. Oh, well, actually, you don't see anything yet, but I will show you when you do. Um, so what you actually do see uh, is that Betany now is basically like just pulled away from you um, by this spider web as it got pulled through. Um, you do see now this open space that all of you can pretty much squeeze through, but it's small and tight. Um, and just for mechanical purposes, it's basically going to take you a turn to get inside. Um, you can't see Betany anymore. Um, she's out of view as she gets pulled into a different space. Um, so I'm going to just leave her away for a little bit until you manage to get there. Um, and uh, we will enter combat uh, with... Yeah, that guy's okay. That's going to be fun for anybody. Um, so uh, you hear... What's that? Yeah. I had seen Betany's avatar up close. She's cute. <laughs> she's, got, she's got bigger widow's peak than I do. <laughs> well, you know. You get what you get. Yeah, you uh, let's see what he's going to do here. Oh, yeah. A million percent. Um, okay, yeah. Well, he's going he's gonna to ravage on this poor, poor little woman. So you just hear a scream uh, as this thing goes. Uh, but... See. That's a miss. That's a hit. And that's a miss, so just with the long sword. D8 plus two, seven. Seven points damage. Okay, um, so you just hear a scream from Betany as she gets pulled into this thing, uh, and it sounds as if she's in pain. Um, that will bring us to Rowena, your turn. Okay. Uh, so we don't see any enemies yet, right? We right. just see that she was pulled into the wall. Basically what All you right. can see uh, is a kind of like tunnel where I put her avatar, but you don't see her. I'm just, I'm keeping her hidden because so you, you can't totally see what she sees. Okay, I guess I should follow her in there. I think the only way out is through. Okay, uh, so Romina, you're going in there? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you do make it through um, as you kind of follow along in this space uh, and you find yourself in a kind of open um, an open cavernish uh, but as you start crawling through kind of like trying to squeeze and get through and the space seems tighter and tighter um, there's no light coming from this area um, I'm assuming you're kind of crawling with your torch um, what, what you notice most first is just the smell of rank decay it smells horrible and the closer that you get to the space the harder it is for you to kind of get there um because the webbing just seems thicker and thicker and thicker but you do manage to come out on the other side um that will basically end your turn uh, unless you have any bonus actions that you can do i'll give you that um, but you do walk up into the space and here is what you see um where did you go so as you get to the space kind of on the wall above you uh, with Betany on the floor kind of bleeding uh, is this half spider, half person. Um, and it looks a oh. little... Let me get this photo. If it'll go. Come here, you. Oh, it's not going to let me do it right from the web, huh? No fun. I need to load it up so you guys can see it. <laughs> It looks like this. Uh, and he's kind of slobbering and salivating. He's got a sword in one hand that's kind of broken and rusted. Uh, and his, his uh, teeth are kind of point, pointed out there and bloodied um, as he uh, sunk his teeth into poor Betany, who's hurt and wounded on the floor. Uh, any bonus actions or anything you'd like to do? Otherwise, that'll end your turn. No? Okay. 
Uh, Thad. Can you that... hear me? No, I'm good. Okay, perfect. Thad, that'll be uh, your turn. All right. Well, I am also, uh, you know, hearing that scream. I'm going to charge in. Do my best to get through those weeds. Okay. Uh, so um, you, you do get through. You can use your movement. Um, it just takes all of it as you get in there. Um, as you land, I will. Um, you kind of see that same space um, that you kind of and, and it's really tight. And just a quick mechanical thing: the spider creature again is on the ceiling, like upside down, above you guys. Um, uh, but I will. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Uh, you. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, you'll be right in and there. And is that like in the creature's clutches or? No, on she's the on the ground. ground. Um, okay. It does seem like she was recently dropped, though. She's still um, grappled up in some webbing, um, and, and she is how bleeding. how high up is the ceiling? Uh, let me just double check to see if I have that set up for you. I want to say I made it 12 feet, but let me just double check. Yeah, 12 feet. Cool. Um... Well then, cast in Burning Hands it is. I'm is Burning Hands a bonus right. action? Uh, but, 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 no. Yeah, basically to squeeze through that space instead of making you roll a check. I used your action. I, I used your action. So if you have a bonus action you want to use it, you can use it. But you can't move. Uh, you can't. Uh... Uh, then I'm good. <laughs> uh, Zunus, that brings us to your turn. I guess I'm going to follow suit and uh, join the gang doesn't really seem any point to stick back when we're in combat yeah um you're you were kind of further away so i would say you will just be able to get there that would be all of your action as well um so that would end your turn i assume yeah there, unless i can do anything else but i assume mm -hmm. i can't yeah not with where you are um and then oh, Bentley, we're just gonna put it right underneath uh and then ivo that brings us to you uh yeah i'm gonna jump in and join the group as well. Okay. Uh, any yeah, bonus or actions or anything there. you want to try to accomplish? Um, no, not at the moment. But I find like being in the room and seeing the creature, I guess just to confer with the group, but this is what the Dark Elves said that their leader was? Is that what I'm thinking of? This um, is, this is no. Reminiscent God. Lolf was like their god, not their leader. Um, and this is not Lolf. Okay. So this is not what they were talking about. This is a different spider. Um, okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I have um, second wind. Okay. So I can use that to basically do an attack, right? Uh, let me just do a quick check on that. I think... I think second win is just a quick healing for you. Yeah, that only lets you get some health points back. Um, uh, how about fighting spirit? Is that what I'm thinking, maybe? Yeah, that's only... You're thinking, yeah. I think, of action surge. Um, which yeah, you... Yeah, but that's after attack, right? Yeah, that's after... Yeah, that's an additional action. Well, actually, you could use it now if you wanted to. Because um, technically, you used your action to get into the room. If you wanted to use action surge, then you could take another full action. Okay. And, and attack. I'm gonna do action surge. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do action action surge. Okay. And attack the old spider with my shatter spike. Yeah. Go ahead. Roll the hit. I'm gonna go right at it. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Thirteen. Uh, let's see if that hits actually. Uh, that misses. As it kind of like just parries it with its own sword. Yeah. Um, I'm good then. That'll bring us back uh, to this creature um, who is going to, now seeing that Betany is still kind of grappled and tied up in its webs, is going to change focus and go for the first thing that attacked it, which is going to be Ivo. Uh, so Ivo, he is... Let's see what spells he's going to do. Yeah, that'll be an entertaining one. Um, so, immediately in this space, 
it just turns completely black. There is no more light. Uh, even the folks with dark vision can no longer see. Whoa. Uh, that and uh, you do you do see this magical darkness as very familiar. Um, the same thing was done to you guys where you were in the Feywild by the Darklings. Uh, although these creatures look different, it's a similar spell that seems like it was cast on you. Uh, but this whole space is now basically completely dark. Um, even those with dark vision are no longer able to see. Uh, and that will end its turn uh, and move it to Rowena. Uh, how close am I to the creature? Uh, when you landed, you were like right next to it. Okay. I'd like to take... Hmm. Am I at a disadvantage because I can't see anything? Correct. You are considered blind at this okay. point, so... Okay. Would my torch help at all, or no? Uh, no. Because he cast this. Correct. All right. I think I'm gonna, uh, lash out with my dagger and try and stab this thing. That might uh, be bad, because what if you stab with us? <laughs> roll, roll to hit, uh, and roll at disadvantage. Okay. Okay. Uh, and remember, you won't uh, be adding your sneak attack bonus. Right. The hit is 18, and that is at a disadvantage. Uh, okay. Yeah, that does. Uh, that actually does miss. Ooh. At 18? It's too good. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, that's a good point is it possible for me to stab one of my comrades instead uh sometimes i'll allow it i, I will say yes if you like do a crit fail and you're right next to someone but for the most part i, I try not to be too skeevy um thanks to you <laughs> you are you're, this thing is also above you so you're stabbing this way and you don't really expect like you know fad's not going to be 10 feet tall all of a sudden yeah <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that's all I can do with that. Yeah, Fab, it's now your turn. Um, boop, 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 boop. Great. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's pitch black. <laughs> Correct. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Fairy Fire. Okay. See if I can't get a little bit of visibility for us. So it's a uh, dex save 13. Uh, maybe do I add my spell attack modifier to that or no? I don't. No, that if you're looking on D and D Beyond, it's already added it for you. Um, he does fail though. All right. So I I pray then to Helm, you know, by the great eye of Helm, give us sight and illuminate all creatures in the air. So I just want to check one quick thing about Fairy Fire that will work against darkness. Uh, I'm going to say that's clever, so I'm going to allow it. I don't want to spend too much time looking up the rules. So in front of you, um, while things around you are still darkened, um, you do see the faintest green glow of a spider shape on the ceiling above you as it kind of like <sighs> hisses at you. And uh, you hear just a bit of maniacal laughter under its breath. Oh, it's... Uh, I do not have... We all see that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we all uh, similarly are uh, outlined in greenish, so we should have an easier time of not... Stabbing, stabbing each other. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I don't have any other bonus action, so that is... Zunus, that brings us to your turn. Actually, um, yeah. Shit. Yeah, go for it. It's okay. Uh, can I just ask, is it possible to move past this thing without uh, uh, provoking attack? Uh, you could move underneath it, but if you try to go outside of its like uh, five foot range, if it will let me. Like, like, you can get underneath it here if you want to go to the other oh. side, but if you try to go this way, you would uh, get I'll, Actually, I'll stick with uh, with the crew here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Zunas, your turn. Well, since I use my short rest, I'm debating using my nature's wrath 
or forgive me if I'm incorrect, but turn the faithless is I can get this kind of obviously evil creature to be gentler and kind of more on our side. Uh, or am let I me misinterpreting check your, I think turn the faithless might work on this. Let me just double check the type of creature it is. Um, I'm just debating which one of those to use. So you could do it on a fey or fiend. I don't think this is either of those. Yeah, this one affect that. Um, so Did you I could try. You could try nature's wrath, wrath and try to wrap them up. It might work. Um, you're within ten right, feet, 10. so you could. Is that a d20? Uh, so it's actually on him. So he's got to roll a d. He's got to roll. Oh. Uh, he rolled a two. So yeah, that's a fail. Um, so you kind of pray to Sylvanas, this new god that you've started to become attuned to. And just from the cave, like, ceiling, you just see these two huge vines just whoop, break through and kind of wrap him up. Uh, he Wait, does get I restrained. See them? I see them. Uh, you don't see them, but you know they're there in your spirit, in your heart. Okay. Uh, and you do see the kind of outline of this spider just kind of, like, pull in as it's sucked up against the wall. Uh, and it is kind of on the roof, restrained. Uh, anything else on your turn, Zunus? Uh, no, I've restrained the... If I can do something else, yeah, I'll try and stab now. Uh, I don't think you... I, can. I think that's an action, so I don't think you have any bonus actions that way you let you do that, so that's probably the end of your All turn. Alright, well, in that case, I'm pretty pleased with that, then. Uh, Betney, your turn. Oh, nice I'm, I'm playing Betney. Uh, let's see, what does Betney want to do? She's on the floor, grappled, so I think the first thing she's going to do is try to break out of these webs. She rolled a natural one, so she's still stuck. Uh, anything bonus action she can do? Uh... <laughs> Let's see, what bonus actions do you have, Bethany? Yeah, she'll do that. She's got um, she's got a little healing word. She's got to heal herself because she took some damage there. Uh, so what does she cast? 1d4 plus 3. All right, 4. Yeah, 7 points back. She is back up to full health. All right. Uh, that'll end her turn. She's still kind of grappled in these webs. Uh, but Ivo, that brings it to you. Uh, all right. I'm going to try and attack again uh, the, the spider lady uh, with the shutter spike. Uh, okay. Yeah, roll to hit. Um, so, real, real quick, Ivo, just a quick thing that you can do. This might be a good time to yeah. use... Fighting spirit, because you'd get some health points and you roll an advantage on all your hits. Uh, okay. So I can use that. Oh, so now it says a bonus action. I can use that at the start of. Exactly. The, my action. Yep. Yeah, you can do uh, okay. action, bonus action, movement in any order you want. Got it. So I already used it before, so you said I, I roll an advantage now. I'll let you roll again. Out. Yeah, if you want, so you have your fighting spirit engaged, because uh, the thing you used before yeah. was your action surge. So if you want to use another instance of your fighting spirit, which is different, uh, you can roll again to see if you hit it. I have so many bonus actions and actions I use. Yeah, that's kind of the benefit of fighter is like you can really go like three or four times on your turn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see it now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna roll again. And try to attack with the shatter spike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 13. That misses. This thing is tough and fast. Okay. Uh, which is going to bring us back to this creature. Uh, and he is going to then uh, put that on uh, back on y'all. Uh, as he goes to fight you. So he's going to. Uh, do a couple things actually. I think he's got to spread the love a little bit. So first one he's going to put on Ivo is he tries to take a couple swings with his longsword. Um, so first one misses. Second one eight plus six is uh, fourteen. What's your armor class again, Ivo? Sixteen. Uh, that misses. So actually both of these swings he's kind of swinging wildly, restrained. He does miss because he's rolling at disadvantage. Uh, thanks for that, Zunus. That's good stuff. Um, Last one though, he's gonna try to just take a bite out of Thad. Uh, and we'll roll a disadvantage as well, because he's still restrained. <laughs> he rolled a six twice, so he misses on both. Uh, Alright. Uh, Rowena, it's now your turn. You kind of see this like faint 
greenish glow coming from the ceiling above you. I'd like to take my short bow and shoot up at him. Okay, go ahead and roll to hit. Uh, and he is restrained, so you can add your sneak attack bonus again. Okay, great. Uh, Alright, I got 15 on the hit. Uh, did you roll at advantage? No. Roll it again, because yeah, remember, he's uh, he's restrained, if... so... Not better? No, no, no better. Uh, so, 15. Okay, that one actually misses too. Sorry, I'm not much help with this guy. <laughs> so far, I don't think anyone's hit him, so don't worry. Dad, that brings it to your turn. <laughs> All right, this time around, we are going to hit him with uh, the burning hand. Uh, okay, yeah, so go ahead and um, you kind of aim it upwards directly on this creature. Uh, let's see if he can do it. What's the DC on that, 13? And let loose. He rolled a four, so he fails. Go ahead and roll roll for damage. Oh, did we lose Nate? Oh, did we? Oh, uh, no. Can you hear me? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. Oh. I'll put it in chat for him. I think we lost him. I hear Nate. Okay. I don't hear Jesse right now. Yeah, same. I hear Nate, not Jesse. Is Clayton there? Yeah, Clayton's in the kitchen. Hold on, let me hit Jesse up. Hit Jesse. Uh, we don't hear you, but we hear each other. <laughs> Burn again. <laughs> 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 Jesse always has audio trouble. He was doing so good this time, though. There was almost no I issue. That was crisp. Okay. points of damage. All right, nice. Uh, uh, so uh, you see out of Thad's kind of scout body, his hands go upwards along with his warhammer as he shoots this huge cone of fire upwards towards the ceiling. Uh, and it does cast uh, this creature in a uh, fiery glow. Uh, and uh, fiery what? a fiery glow as he kind of... Um, struggles uh, against these flames uh, and he does for the first time seem to take a little bit of damage although he still seems very tough uh, and uh, hard to hard to take down right. brings it to me right mm -hmm. um, I forget exactly what my ens ensnaring strike spell does uh, basically the same thing as nature's wrath um so if you hit with it, it would restrain it, but he's already restrained, so you might want to avoid that one. Hmm. How about... Um, I feel like this... Is it silly to even try, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat with this guy? Uh, well, I mean, hand-to-hand -hand combat probably wouldn't be as effective as your sword. Or another right well i mean it. yeah well, i mean like my melee or melee attack weapon, weapon yeah attack. no no so yeah, far that, that seems to be divine smite okay yeah uh, so go I ahead and like, um I won't. go ahead and roll to hit d20 mm -hmm. d20 plus uh plus four for you d20 plus four is 22. all right so that definitely hits first hit with the melee weapon which is nice uh, so, uh, go ahead and do, uh, 2d6 plus 2 for the damage on that thing. 2d6 is 9 with the plus 2. Um, so another little bit of damage as some of the, um, kind of blackish, thick blood starts to pool out from this guy. He's still 
really strong though. He doesn't even really seem to hurt uh, from these two big hits you gave it. Um, but, oh, you did Divine Smite too, right? What's the damage on Divine Smite? Um, let's see. Uh, go ahead and add 2d8 more on top of that. 2d8? Mm -hmm. Got it. Nine. Cool. All right, nine more points of damage to this creature. Uh, still standing really tough. This guy seems incredibly strong uh, and really vicious. Uh, All right. That will be Bettany's turn now, who's still on the ground. She's just, again, trying to try to get out of these webs. <sighs> she cannot get out of this to save her life, but that's okay. Um, what spells can we do? Um, everyone else, for the most part, still pretty healthy. That's really her only bonus action, I think. Let me just check that real fast. do instead is she is going to use one of her uh, bard abilities um, to inspire three of you people three of her teammates around her so she's going to inspire Rowena Thad and Ivo um, and she kind of you kind of hear her under her under her breath speak a couple of um, speak a couple words that are hard to make out because they're not in a language that you understand uh, but they sound very impactful and very strong. And you three each get five um, temporary hit points. So five extra hit points in that temporary pool. And you can also move your... Uh, immediately, if you'd like, you can use your reaction to move 30 feet away um, from wherever you are in whatever direction you want without taking an opportunity attack. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Okay, where do you want to go? Um, I'd like to go kind of... How far does 30 feet get me? I was thinking near Bettany. Um, well, as you start to move, you notice that like the web's really holding you back, so you'll actually only be able to go half that. But 15, half your speed, will get you here. Okay, great. Okay. I'll take it. Uh -huh. And I added the temporary points where it says temp. I hope Perfect. That's yep, correct. that's exactly right. Uh, and then I'm going to choose for Thad here. He's going to do the same. I think he's going to move down this way. Just get a little more distance. Ivo, do you want to move at all either? Um, I will... Yeah, can I spread out and go closer to where, where Rowena is? Mm-hmm. You want to, like, come down this way? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is it a... Can I go one more block away just so we're not completely grouped up? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. that'll end Bettany's turn. Ivo, that brings us to your turn. All right. Um, gonna try to do. Uh, try to do the shatter spike again. Okay, yeah, roll to hit. Try to get uh, this beast. Uh, Eighteen. Uh, that misses, but remember you have advantage because of fighting spirit, so you can roll again. All right, one more try. Try to get 19 or 20. Uh, 17, so no. Doesn't hit. I didn't. And is that 17 with your bonus or just 17? 17 with my bonus. Oh, really? Damn. All right. Well, yeah, you missed on both. Uh, that'll yeah. bring us back to the Drider. Um, kind of seeing these things uh, occur and happen. So he's a few of you move, so I think he's just going to go for uh, the person who hasn't moved much, which is Zunus. Um, so he is going to take a couple of swings at you, Zunus, with his long sword. First one misses. 16. What's your armor class, Zunus? 16. He, the, he does hit you. Uh, so you take from this drider. You're going to take from his long sword um, seven points of damage. Yikes. And he's also going to try to bite you, oh. which hits. Is that deadly since it's a spider? And it can be. Uh, so you take two points of piercing damage and nine points of poison damage from this creature. Uh, so in total, 11 more points. So with the longsword, you take 18 points of damage. Wow. And he just kind of rips in you. 
Uh, that brings us to Rowena. It is your turn. I'd like to take my short bow again and try and shoot at him. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. And you get advantage because he's still restrained. <laughs> okay, um, I got at advantage. The best I got was fourteen. Yeah, not enough. Oh. Uh, nothing else on your turn, I'm guessing. Nope. Okay. Uh, Thad. Uh, Thad said he wanted to use his Helm's Retribution. Um, so we are going to. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna just check something. Yeah, he's got to hit with it first. Okay, so. He's going to take a swing at this creature at advantage because of restrain. Yes. Hit. Okay. So he hits with Hound's Retribution. Let me just check that one one more time. Um, so 1d8 plus 2. I'm going to use a charge on this creature. 1d8 plus 2. It takes 8 points of damage. From this dude, and he now has retribution cast upon him, uh, and that will end Thad's turn. Uh, Zunus, that brings us to your turn. Can I heal myself? Yeah, of course. My lay on hands. I'm just gonna heal myself because I'm really hurting, and I feel like yeah, for sure. Going further into battle is not wise. Very doable. So, uh, I think I only have five points of healing power. Is that correct? Uh, I thought you had fifteen, but let me check. I have lay on the hands. Do I have 15? Not so. Might be wrong. Well, actually, it says you have a pool of healing power that can restore 20 HP per long rest, but I don't think we've taken. Oh, we haven't. Did you short. use a bunch already? Short rest. We took a short uh, rest, but not a long rest. Let's see. Yeah, does a short rest qualify me for anything? Mm, I don't think it gets back any of what you had. Let me just see how much you have left. Yeah, you only have five points left. Uh, might as well take it, since... Okay. Get it out for you. If you want to just yeah, you give yourself that. five points of healing, give yourself a little bump. Oh yeah. Never done coke, but I know a thing or two about a little bump. <laughs> uh, that counted as your action. Any bonus actions or anything you want to do? Uh, now that I'm a little better, yeah, I'll try striking. Uh, that that counts as the full action, so you don't have an action you can use on that. So. Uh oh, a bonus action? I don't think I... No, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, that'll bring us back to Bethany. Uh, seeing you get pretty hurt, she's going to actually try to heal you as well. Um, so the first thing she's going to do is... Let's see what action she can try to do to heal you. So she's going to use Cure Wounds on you. Um, oops, actually, that's not Bethany. Sorry, she might not have Cure Wounds. Let's see what spell she's got. Uh -huh. Yeah, she's going to cast Healing Word at um, at level 2 for you. Try to get you some more. So you get 2d4 plus the 6 plus, uh, six plus 3. So you get 9 more points of healing back as well from her. Uh, and then as her action, she's going to... Um, let's see. What does she want to do as an action? she's got an ability on yeah it's an action she's just going to try to break out of this grapple again oh finally okay yeah so she finally is able to break out of these webs and kind of get back up on her feet uh, and now is going to take that just to move a little bit away um, kind of stay in that spot so that brings us back to you Ivo okay um Let's just attack. Or do you shatter spike? Okay. Go ahead and roll the hit. Um, do you want to use number. um like your smite or anything on that? Just so I know. Um. Can I? Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna cast smearing, searing smite. Okay. All right. So Ready go ahead and. Attack. Yep. Go ahead and roll the hit. Uh, 18. Oh, wait, no, I got, I got advantage. Yes. 
Oh, 23. Yay! Uh, All right, that does hit. So go ahead and roll damage from your Shatter Spike and then add your Searing Smite damage as well. Which is... Where do I see what I add for the... Um, uh, if you click Searing. on Searing Smite, it'll tell you, but if you actually just look at it, go all the way to the effect column, it says 2d6. Oh, 2d6, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your Shatter Spike okay, is your so 1d8 plus 3 or 1d10 if you're using two hands. Um, so for the damage for my Shatter Spike, it's a 5. Okay. And then the effect of it, I gotta get my 6-sided die out of here. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 9. Uh, so nine plus five, you said? Or, sorry, I guess I don't know. Is that, uh, oh, I added on to what I rolled for the, mm -hmm. uh, for the damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 14. 14, yep. nice, okay. Um, so yeah, this thing takes another big kind of as you pull through and you see just the trails of this fire kind of go through this creature as well. Um, it's... Uh, burp, 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 does seem um, to be getting a little bit more hurt and some chunks out of it, but it's still pretty buff and just <sighs> like drooling and kind of spitting at you in anger. Uh, and every time it kind of takes a little bit of more pain, it kind of laughs at the um, kind of laughs devilishly and maniacally at the at the at the hurt. You get the sense this thing's a bit of a masochist. Uh, but it will bring us back to this creature, um, kind of smelling blood in the water now. Uh, continues in on Zunus. Uh, and we'll try and take a couple of swings with that longsword again on him. Um, he is still at disadvantage, though. Because he's restrained. So the first one hits. Second one misses. So uh, you're going to take another seven points of damage. Um, and he's going to try to bite oh, you again at disadvantage. It's back where I start. <laughs> yes, because he hit you again seven. with his bite. So it's you lost... So seven and then another nine, uh, so fourteen points of damage. Oh wow, I'm in, I'm in two. Oh no! Get a heal up, Zunus. We can heal him. <laughs> I my last turn was healing myself. <laughs> uh, don't you have cure like wounds though? Like you have more heal healing ability in your spells list. Oh, okay. Do I have cure wounds? <laughs> yeah, you've got cure wounds. You can heal yourself. Uh, but Rowena, that brings us to your turn. Okay. Uh, am I... Am I too far to use my dagger on it? Uh, no, you could probably make that. You're not too far out of its range. Okay. Or your I'll rapier might a be shot. a little bit stronger, whichever one. Okay, I'll use the rapier. Yeah. Okay, let me roll and hit. Am I still rolling at advantage or not? Yes, you are, because it's restrained. Uh, 16. Miss. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, since you used your rapier, though, you can you can use two-weapon fighting with that, so you can use a dagger now if you'd like. Okay. And kind of your offhand. Uh, you will still get advantage of that because he's restrained. So. Okay, I'll take it. Come on. 23 for the that dagger. That hits. Um, so go ahead and roll damage, and you can add your sneak attack. Okay. <laughs> Bless you. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, six, so... 7 plus 6. 13. Nice. And that was with sneak attack bonus? Yep. Awesome, nice. Okay, so for the first time, this thing seems to be a little bit more winded. Uh, it's still standing and still is a bucket of strong, but he does seem like he's taken some beatings and is bleeding pretty profusely. Um, nice. Anything else on your turn, Rowena? Uh, can I? This might be a dumb question. Can I? I see one of my actions I can use is deal bludgeoning damage equal to one plus my strength modifier. Is that something I could do? Well, you've already used your action. And your oh, bonus okay. action to try to hit so again. So. Okay, I'm good. Cool. 
Um, so that'll be Dad's turn. Uh, let me see if I can type for him. Let's see if he sees it. He's he's typed for us. He typed to us. Okay, perfect. My phone. Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot to do that. Um, he had Helm's Retribution cast, so when he hit Zunus with damage, let me see how much Helm's does to him in return. Uh, Helm's Retribution. Equipment. Uh, so, as soon as he hit Zunus, he might take more damage. Let's see if he does. He does not, but he takes half damage. Yeah, he's gonna take half damage on 2d10, so. 10 to 10. Uh, 10. So he takes 5 points of damage from that pretty quickly, and then he also hits again with his Helm's Retribution and hits. Um, and Helm's Retribution does 1d8 plus 2, I think. 1d10 plus 2 because he's swinging 2, so 1d10 plus 2. Nice, five, seven more points of damage on this guy. Nice, okay. Um, and another charge is expended. All right. Uh, that will end Thad's turn, Zunus goes. Zunus is about to cure his own wounds. Uh, cool, uh, go ahead and heal yourself. Uh, whatever level you're doing, cure wounds up. Uh, it looks like a 1d8 plus 3. Uh, yep. 6. Cool. So you get 6 more points of healing to yourself. I'll take it. Eat it. Alrighty, so Bethany's back on her feet. Um, she kind of seeing this and wanting to make sure she is as useful as possible can now finally cast some spells because she's no longer grappled. Uh, and she is going to cast Shatter kind of up. Um, so you hear her in like this more common voice and she kind of dawns on this persona now. She kind of breathes in and she says, your mind breaks. And you just hear it just kind of like come out in this huge loud volume as you hear this huge just like breaking of glass almost. Uh, what's the DC? 13. Fail. Nice. Okay. It takes 3d8 thunder damage as it just feels like its mind is breaking. Oh my god. Thunder damage. 3d8. Thunder damage. Thunder. Thunder gun bit. 7 plus... 16 points of damage uh, from Betany, who is uh, now quite, quite upset. Uh, and she will then take her bonus action uh, and she will use one of her bardic inspirations to inspire um, Ivo and hopefully help him in his attacking since he's been really swinging for it. Uh, and so she says, um, uh, for you to hit better with my dear and she kind of like gives you a little pat on the shoulder. Um, so Ivo, we haven't done this because no one has a bard in this class, but one of the things a bard can do is give you an extra 1d6 to add to any ability check. That includes rolling to hit. So if you roll something and you don't feel like it's good enough and you want a little bit more of a nudge, you can add an extra 1d6 to that roll and try to bump yourself over that level. Okay, so like if you roll a, D, uh, a d20 and you got like a 10, like I want more than that, you could roll the D6 and have Correct. That. Yeah, that would be really helpful on those ones you've been rolling where you're getting like 18 and you're like, motherfucker, yeah. I'll murder this thing. That would that would be when you use that. Cool? Um, yeah, so yeah, bards are fun. Bards are fun. Uh, so Ivo, that actually does bring us to your turn, though. Alright, I'm gonna fucking do this uh, as last act in this this session. Go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shatter's right in the, the, old, the gut of it. Right, All right. in the gut. Go ahead and roll to hit, and you still get advantage on this thing. Um, well, let me see how you do that. That was pretty good. Uh, 20. A natural 20, or? Nice. No, it's added on. It's all right. 20. Still good. That that does hit, though, so go ahead and roll damage. Okay. 
And you still have Searing Smite engaged, don't forget. Yeah, so I gotta roll the D. Yeah, second. Uh, let's see, no, uh, 13 total damage. Nice, okay. Uh, so you, as you kind of cut through, one of its legs just kind of comes off as it like flies out. It's still up there, but now it's really on its last leg and not uh, not doing well as it kind of, now it, it's strange, it's in pain and screaming in pain, but at the same time laughing to itself as it seems a little crazed. Okay, weird spider. <laughs> uh, that does bring us back to the spider though. Uh, I, I gotta go. You're I'm good. Right, you guys, I'll finish out. Have a good night, Clayton. All right. I'll uh, I'll give you a heads up as to what happened there. Let's uh, just finish this one out. So, uh, that one feeling a bit crazied uh, will attack. I think he's gonna attack Fad because Thad's been going at him a little bit. Uh, so he's gonna hit him with his miss hit. And then with the bite as well. Miss. Okay, so he does seven points of damage to Thad. Let me just adjust that. Oh, I don't know what Thad was at before, but he's not doing so great now. Let's see if we got that one in there. Okay, and then with that, Helm's Retribution hits again. So he takes 2d10. Nice, nine points of damage. Okay, and so as he hits Thad, uh, Thad's, um, Thad's Warhammer kind of lights up with that, and it shoots back and kind of reciprocates that damage back to him. Uh, and the creature kind of gets stunned by this radiant light coming from Helm's Warhammer, uh, and he just kind of burns from the inside as you see this light start to beam out from inside of him uh, and it kind of falls to the floor, it tumbles over and it's just this incredible glow of light as this creature is now writhing and violently kind of spasming on the ground uh, and slowly but surely he does just see the kick slower and slower until he dies uh, and it's now Wow, we did it! Passed. You killed this thing. This was your first creature with more than 100 hit points. Damn, that was... did not seem like we were going to overcome. <laughs> well, he almost died. Dad's at five. Uh, Bettany almost died as soon as she got sucked up. It was all pretty bad. Uh, but I think that'll probably be a good place to stop so we can get the, uh, the other guys on the next time that we play. So. Uh, 